Hey guys, Matt and Scott here from the old 77. Just wanted to take a moment and say, have you heard about Anchor yet? It's a great way to do a podcast. Yeah, it's awesome. Like Anchor's got all of this stuff for you. You get analytics. We're online everywhere. Apple, Google, and they did all of that for us. We didn't have to submit anything. Nope. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Right. So no computer, no problem. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Motherfucking yeah. (laughs) God, it feels good to say that word in the studio. The Old 77, a show where we pick a topic, but rarely stick with it. Become a subscriber at patreon.com slash the old 77 podcast. Call or text the Old 77 listener line at 573-246-0779. Now let's get on with the show. Margarita. 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 All right. Okay. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the old 77. It's a safe place. In an unsafe world, we want to thank some of our Patreon subscribers. So thank you to Toby Dean today. Toby. 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 What as tradition goes. Toby! <laughs> <laughs> we also want to thank our uh, our uh, our listeners. Yes, sir. In New Zealand and Ireland. Mm. I know who the New Zealand one is. I do, But too. I would really like to know the Ireland Call us. Yeah, give us a call or text. Dude, just shoot us a, a direct or an email. message. Yeah, yeah, we're on Facebook too, brother. Yeah. We want to know who you are. Thank you for listening. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Heck yeah. Also, thanks to our fans in Missouri, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Illinois, and California in that particular order. And I think I can claim responsibility for some of the Philadelphia yeah. listenership. Yeah, yeah, I can too. But Virginia... Yeah, it, well, didn't you do a stint in radio in Virginia? Maybe that's no, it. No, I did not. Um, but I know someone who lives down there, but they live in Maryland. So, like, Maryland's hmm. like... Maryland's definitely I not Virginia. I don't know anyone no. in Virginia, dude. Yeah, I don't I don't either. Hmm. So maybe they're just like, yeah, this Maybe is... they're genuine fans. Hey! Maybe. Hey, thank you thank so you. much for listening, man. Give us a call on the listener line. <laughs> yeah. At 573-246-0779. We also want to thank Patreon. Yes. Thank you to them and to all of our Patreon subscribers. If you'd like to check us Absolutely. out on Patreon, too, yeah. it's uh, patreon.com slash the old 77 podcast. Yeah, and, and thanks to uh, – who was that show the other day that was talking about us? Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, it's back in Illinois. It was the uh, Morning Disaster podcast. Okay. They they never named us, but they were, like, giving off a lot of clues. And mm-hmm. I'm, I'm listening to it, and I'm like, yes. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, that's us, and, and yeah, that's us, yeah. and that's definitely us. And, oh, and it just – it all fit. They were talking about a. They must have listened to our bonus stuff, uh-huh. oh, and nice. I, I don't know how. But they they were like, "Yeah, it's these guys. They get together and they just uh, get blazed and have a good time and party it up." And they're always talking about doing it late at night. Yeah, they're drinking like and so stuff. late yeah. at night. That's the best and, time. And one of the guys was like, "I'm a morning guy. I can't do that. I got a real job. Mm. Uh, we have real jobs. Too. I do too, yeah. man. Yeah. That's why we do this at night, right? And it's a Friday. Yeah, absolutely. So we're not stupid. We're not doing it on like a Wednesday." Yeah, well, I, I can't. I can't. Who do you think we are? Seriously, I, I, because I have a real job, I can't sustain a daily podcast. I got to do it weekly, mm-hmm. man. That's but that it. that made me really giddy that day. Yeah, me too. When you told me that, I'm like, "Are oh, you sure, Scott?" And, he's and, then, like, and then I was I absolutely right. I was text, no, it's, uh, I was in their chat us. room texting back and forth with them. Yeah. It was yeah, it was a good time. Nice. I need yeah. to listen to that. It one. was it was a good time. It's the morning disaster, and you can find it on Facebook, I believe. Who nice. else are we forgetting? Uh, we are also forgetting our, uh, our our enormous friend JT. Heck yeah! Over at the brilliant Paranormal Sun, Paranormal Sun and the Fortunate Sun. That's right. And Love those. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks to him. Yeah, and thanks to the girls over at uh, I don't know why, but thanks to the girls over at uh, the uh, Quite Unusual Pod because they're my favorite podcast right now. Yeah, you played like maybe five minutes of that today, and oh. I was like, that sounds really good. Man. They have a good chemistry. Those two they ladies. Do. I yeah. love yeah. listening the, to them. The, and yeah. Banner, and if you've dude, not the heard the, the past two that they've done, one of them come down with the COVID. Oh no! Oh, right. So they've did? been yeah. So they've been doing Damn. it. One is now in the haunted attic, and the other that. one is in her bedroom. Wow. Quarantined. Right. Oh. But they sound great together, and they sound right on point because they sound like they're right there. And I found out today they're in Chicago. That's cool. So they're local-ish. Yeah. Nice. Kind yeah. of. Yeah. Ish. It's like eight Regional-ish. hours. Regional-ish. Close of. enough. Right. We'll take Mid- it. Midwest. It's, it's not like New Zealand. 
yeah. right. which was you know 17 hours in the future. Hey, we got him on the air though. That was yeah. awesome. I was going to say that was pretty that, efficient. That was a yeah, that was a great interview. We had a, we had a couple of connectivity issues and there, but it was pretty good for a being 17 like, hour time difference. Yeah. You yeah. got to expect that. Yeah, 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 it was a good interview. Yeah, I enjoyed the shit out of that. Yeah, me too, man. Yeah. And I'd love to have him back on. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, he's Absolutely. a great guy. Oh yeah. There's a couple other podcasts that I've got my eye on too that I think we should contact. Yeah. Some other, uh, you know, like paranormal type podcasts that I listen mm. to. Well, who are you listening to right now? Well, I mentioned earlier today the guys at Grimerica, or mm. it might be pronounced Grimerica. I think it's Grimerica. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm not for sure on that. Though. Their whole thing is is you know weird shit, paranormal and UFOs and aliens and ghosts mm. and all that shit. That's I've, cool. I've been listening to those guys for a few years, but. Given our interest in that, I think I think we need to hit those guys up sometime. <laughs> yeah, mutually beneficial. Uh, I know we've talked about it before, and I, I seriously I, I need to just do it. But we've talked about uh, reaching out to Aaron Clark here in town mm-hmm. and talking about like paranormal stuff. Yeah, check out Scared to Death. Uh, it's a podcast, and it's a it's um this comedian and his wife. The stories they tell. It will shake you. Okay, That's what's it called again? Scared to Death. That's the best. Okay. Dude, it's an awesome podcast. It's about that time of, time of the yeah. year for us to be doing that. Yeah, yeah and I think we, I, I definitely want to do that Heck at yeah. some point. Halloween's and, my favorite. And these upcoming episodes, we want to get scared. Yeah, a little bit. it is October. It's coming October. Out. Yeah, oh, okay, so good opportunity since we're talking about scary shit. Did you guys know? That Unsolved Mysteries is coming back for a second season on Netflix. Of course it When, is. though? The nineteenth of October. Seriously? Shut up! That already. And they, Damn. they, and so this is what this is what it said. It said little is known, but one episode delves into the paranormal with an inexplicable, inexplicable ghost story. That's the ones that Ooh. always scared the shit out of me to yes. creep you out this October. So it, I'm it looking forward to that. It was mm-hmm. never the UFOs because mm-hmm. I was always down with those, but it was the ghost stories on that. Mm-hmm. They all freaked oh, me the fuck I loved out. Loved it. All of them. I get scared as shit. Y'all ask any of my old friends. I, I'm a, I am a big pussy when it comes to like horror movies and stuff like that. Yeah. But then I can like sit in a room by myself with the lights off and I can watch like Dead Files or some other like paranormal show and just like sit there and be okay. Like maybe get a little scared, but like I'm not freaked out with it as I would be, you know, a fictional horror movie. Maybe it's the way it's laid I don't know what out. it is. It's the opposite for me, man. Really? The fictional horror movies really don't fuck with me that much. Yeah. But the real? <laughs> the real ones yeah. freak me out, man. Yeah. I feel that way about just life in general. Like, I'm, mm. a, I'm, I'm an avid reader, but I read almost all nonfiction. Because the real world, to me, is crazier than any fiction. Mm-hmm. I disagree. Uh, for me, I, I don't want to be here when I read. I want to go elsewhere. I want to go into another yeah. realm or another fantasy world. That's why wherever. I play video games, though. Yeah. I was reading an article today about this this lady that got a Nintendo Switch when COVID happened, and she said it's the the best investment that she's oh, had. It's, it's solid, yeah. Because, like, for that, you know, one or two hours a day that she's doing that, she's not thinking about work. She's not thinking about the virus. She's in a whole other world. And I think people need that right now, especially since most people are just drinking a whole lot right now. <laughs> but no, this is a great time of year, though, because the season's changing. Right. People are decorating already for Halloween. I see a lot of people. And already. so, like, where where is, like, the line at where it's when is too soon to start getting ready for Halloween? Well, if you're I don't okay, think there is. But I, if you're OK with that, are you OK with, like, decorating right now for Christmas? No. No, no. but Halloween is... I mean, if you're gonna if you're going if to enjoy, soon, though. like yeah. right now, I'd be okay if we just like got the Halloween decorations out. Right, absolutely. Like oh, right now, too. our house is decorated for like the fall season. We yeah. have like pumpkins, not like real pumpkins, like ceramic pumpkins. Right, right. A few of those pumpkins we were have looking like at a, me weird last week. <laughs> a few like right? autumn, mm-hmm. you know, decor around the house. But so you nothing guys have, Halloween-ish yet. Those so you guys ass. have a separate fall decor and then a yes. Halloween decor. We yeah. used to have that. My I wife is the in, the, the decorator. Of, yeah. Yeah, 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 mine we used the to do decorator. all that, and then we moved a couple times, and it just got to be a hassle. And nobody can see my house from the road. Right. We so. just gave it up, and nobody comes Well, over. the thing is, we have a Halloween party every year. Right. So we have, like, I mean, for one, Sarah and I just love Halloween. I think the only Halloween we did not decorate was the year Sloan was born. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was just too hard. Yeah, I remember that. I wasn't sleeping and 
You guys were like three oh, weeks in. Newborn. And I That's... still carved two pumpkins up. Nice. That was great. But uh, last year we got back to it, and then I think we're still going to have a Halloween party this year. So we were talking tonight about it, and she was like, you know, I'm going to have to put like a disclaimer in the invite and say, yeah. if you don't feel well, if you've been around someone that you know of or possibly could, stay the f- home. Right. Yeah. Or you if know, you feel and, uncomfortable. Right. So like, if you feel uncomfortable, yeah. then don't come. I yeah. see so many Halloween costumes incorporating masks now. But it's Halloween. Yeah. Right. Everyone can wear a mask. Right. It's easy now. Be a nurse. Be a doctor for Halloween. Right. right. I know. was a doctor last year. Be Batman. Party. Dude, you were. Dr. Goodweed. <laughs> right, I, got a co- I got a couple of prescriptions <laughs> off of him. That's when right. Dave showed up to the party, I was like, whoa, Dave's here. Dave had a pad, uh, and it, it actually had a prescription pad. He was writing everybody Dave, prescriptions. Do you know what Dave told Sarah? Oh, God, what did he I goes, tell Sarah? He, he says to Sarah. <laughs> I don't know what Dave told I Sarah. I guess Matt finally likes me because I'm inviting to the Halloween party. Well, yeah. Did I really say that? Yeah, she yeah. said you said that. Hmm. You must have I was it. probably like kind of sort of You're halfway probably joking. You know? I was he must you. have had a prescription. I yeah, was feeding probably. him 100, pro- 100 proof Knob Creek. Right. Uh, he's like, Do you have any whiskey? I was like, Yeah, oh, you want the hard oh, shit? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he was being a man about it. You love you love bourbon like I do. So. Yeah, man. It's good, especially in the fall time. But Halloween, fall, I this is like my favorite season we're going into. I'm saying goodbye to summer. Bye, humidity. Bye, heat. Yeah. Suck my ass. Yeah. Fuck you, bugs. Bye bye, swamp ass. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's that nice in between <laughs> period. Where you're not just so frigidly cold that you just hate the world. Because I reached that point by the end of November. Right. Or by the end of winter. No, know. by the end of November. You're right. Mm. Yeah, mm. you know. I don't yeah. know. They, they're saying that we're supposed to have a really, you know, harsh winter. They say that every year. It's I know, seen I for the past five years they've said that every you year. You know, yeah. Scott, we're going to have a hard winter. You know, that, that <laughs> willy worm over there, it, his ass fell off. He ain't got no hair. So we're going to have a hard winter, see? It's, um, you know, you probably know the, the persimmon trick, oh, yeah. right? You cut yeah. a persimmon mm. in half. and What is it? The uh, fork <laughs> and the spoon and the knife. Yeah, and I can't remember. I don't remember one. what yeah. does what. You can tell how bad it's going to get by the cat sphincter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if it much. tastes like raspberry, we're going to have a hard winter. <laughs> look at look at the cat's asshole. Just, you got to lick it first. It just puckers right it up. It just puckers right up. <laughs> it's like a tight balloon knot. <laughs> He's anticipating a hard winter. <laughs> Damn it, Luna. <laughs> we need one of those little um, sampler machines oh, where dude. we can have, like... If we had the touchpad sampler, yeah, yeah it'd, it'd be off, man. So we can do that. Pew, 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 pew. Yeah. That thing. Wah, wah, wah. Hey, you know what post-production's for? Oh. Today is my buddy Adam Viley's birthday. Oh. Obviously, the same day as 9-11. I, f- I feel sorry for yeah, you, Adam. Man. Yeah, you're on, a, you're on a bad day to be... But sorry, I, I, didn't um, mean it like I that. sent him a meme today, and I was like, never forget Adam's birthday. <laughs> Nice. I bet he appreciated that. Speaking about that, it, it is nine eleven today. We yeah. can't really not talk yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, Scott, where were you at on nine eleven? I was living at home with my mom and dad, mm-hmm. and I was sleeping soundly because I'd went out and partied my balls off the night before. Mm-hmm. That was probably still a little drunk, to be honest. When my mom came in and slapped me in the head and told me to get up, mm-hmm. I needed to come see this. Mm-hmm. And I remember walking out, and they were watching TV. I still remember how it smelled, like the air. I remember how it tasted. I just remember everything about it. Like They were watching TV in the kitchen, drinking coffee. They were smoking. And it was it was there like the first the first plane had hit and we were talking and it was maybe 30, 40 seconds. And I remember looking up, seeing on TV Mm -hmm. the second plane come in Mm -hmm. and it hit the tower and then they just boom down they went. Mm -hmm. And my dad looked at me and went, the world just changed. Yeah, for sure. I remember that. day. How about you, Dave? What were you doing? So I was also sound asleep. I was still living at my mom's two, house. It's, it's a theme, right? <laughs> I can't remember if I partied the night before. That was a Monday, so you know, shit. I mean, anyway. It didn't matter back then. I was just starting radio, so you, I was partying you every have, night. You must have been in high school or something. Uh, in 2000, I graduated in 2000, so I was just in college. Okay. I was in like my first year of college. Gotcha. My sister called me and just said, Dave, turn on the TV. And so mm. I turned on the TV, and I think my exact words were, holy fucking shit. Like, yeah. I think I said that a few times. Um and it's funny because I remember that whole day too, man. Like I remember driving around with my buddy Ryan. I remember there were long lines at the gas station because yeah. everybody oh, yeah. thought gas yeah. was going to be really expensive. I remember that later in the day. So my buddy, my buddy Ryan, because there was such a long line to get to the gas station, we were trying to get in there not to get gas, just to get something from inside. And so he got out of my car and walked to the gas station. 
And when he came back out, he had this wallet in his hands. He found this dude's wallet with like, I don't know, probably like 200 bucks cash in there. Yeah. Damn. So I remember, I remember that, that day really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was a weird day. And then I think I went to work. I went to work. I worked at a golf course at that time. Mm-hmm. And I remember, you know, like we had a TV in the clubhouse and stuff. And of course the news was on and. You know, I think that very first day there there was some kind of like bombing or something. Like we were already starting to bomb people yeah. in Afghanistan. Hmm. Um, yeah, man. What, what, remember, what was your? What, or go ahead. Well, I remember listening to the point in St. Louis, and they yeah. they came on at three o'clock in the afternoon, and they started from there on till midnight. They were running a disclaimer: mm-hmm. please stop requesting bombs over Baghdad. We will not play that song. Yeah, again. they like bam, banned they that banned song it for a while. while. Yeah. I remember that too. There were a lot of songs that got yeah. banned after 9/11. There was an album, there was some like not very well-known rap group that on the front cover of their album showed the twin towers getting yeah. like mm-hmm. exploding and so that there, that tasteless. album well this was before it happened. Oh, oh. Yeah, it was just one of those weird well, kind of prediction things and so that album cover got banned yeah. for a while. What were you doing that what day? What were you Matt? doing, man? Uh, the same as you guys. I was just waking up. Yeah. I was actually late for work. Yeah. I was uh You were in radio at that time as well? Well, I was actually um I was in school still. Mm. But I was going for communications mm-hmm. and uh but I worked at a bar downtown uh, at a place called McCormick and Schmicks. Oh, yeah. Um I was working the lunch shift. I've done commercials for them. But I woke up and um, I was late for work. And then I called work, and she's like, are you late because of what's going on on TV? And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so I got yes. the remote real quick. That's when you say yes. Yeah. And uh, I was watching it. I, I was kind of like, is this real? Right. Yeah. Just boom, the second plane hit. And I was like, oh, my God. I grabbed my shit, got in my car. As I was driving to go downtown, she calls me back, and she's saying, um, the city is closing Center City down. So... Don't come in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, w- I would have freaked out. So from there, I just went to my buddy's house and we kind of hung out and just kind of talked about it for a little while. And yeah, yeah. And I went home and my mom and dad were at home and I was just watching it with them because I still live with them. And yeah, I was just in disbelief. It was kind of like the longest day ever. Like it was a long day. Th- well, that was like the longest week because the NFL. Yeah. They canceled all their games. Yeah, Major baseball. League Baseball yeah. canceled yeah. the playoffs or something. Yeah. No, no, no. They were still in September baseball. I'm sorry. Yeah. But that but October. They, they canceled something, I remember. They, Everything went dark for I like still a remember while. when Bush came out to throw the first pitch at, at the Yankees yeah. game. Yeah, I remember that. And it wasn't just the first pitch. He even said like he was scared to death to go out there. He had a bulletproof vest on and all that. Oh, right. Yeah. And he said he knew how much this meant to everyone for him to go out there yeah. fearless and throw the first ball because this is how defiant we are. This yeah. is like this is the American way. We don't stop for anything. Right. And it was such a big deal when he did that. The NFL um, came back like the following weekend. They did all their nine uh, eleven tribute stuff and and I do remember going to war. I do remember like Bush coming on and saying, We're coming for you. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. That was a very significant time in our youth because, sure. you know, Scott, you and I were talking about this earlier. Yeah. There's a whole generation now that wasn't alive yeah, right, for we, this. We were talking and about now, that. And yeah. they're 17, 18 years old now. Yeah. yeah. Most of it, the kids that I teach to play guitar or well, ukulele, most of them. We work with a couple really mm-hmm. young yeah, kids. Yeah. Like, I'm talking 14, 15 right. year old kids, and they. They well, know mm-hmm. maybe secondhand knowledge yeah. of nine eleven, but Man. these generations who were born after, they really have to know how it affected everyone at that time. Yeah, because well, it literally you, you was you have Pearl to, Harbor. For sure. Yes, you have to carry on its its memory, dude. Yeah, and say what you will about uh, politics, you know, before nine eleven and after nine eleven, but certainly in our lifetimes. You know, the day after nine eleven, there we were never more united as a country. Right. Never, right. never. Yeah, absolutely. I don't. I don't ever remember us feeling that way. Yeah, ever. Right. Even today, we've right. we've fallen you know. pretty far since. Right. Then. Oh, I think people forget the how united we are and and what it meant to be an American. Yeah. Yes, but we also put a lot of things in place too after that because we realized what we had you know overlooked because that mm-hmm. was a massive. Failure in intelligence on our part. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Because the CIA knew that they were here yes. and didn't tell anyone. Yep. 
Well, but that was the thing. I'm pretty well, sure. And, and we know that now. Yeah. We know right. that now. But I'm pretty sure Clinton, and I know for sure Bush. Well, Clinton had the chance to take out. Yeah, he had the chance. Lund. And I think that, that earlier in Bush's presidency, one of his daily briefings, the headline on it was Bin Laden determined well, to, attack, uh, yeah. to attack in the U.S. So we had some forewarning of it for we sure. We did. During Clinton's administration. Massive fail, though. Yeah, during sure. Clinton's administration, there was a bombing against an, an yes. American uh, mil- battleship. Those bastards put a hole in the side of that ship. Yeah. I can look it up real quick. I'm yeah, I can. it was. I think it was the USS Cole. That's I mean, it. Yeah. yeah. I knew okay. as soon as I heard it, I would know it. You're so, right. Yeah, I'm You're almost right. sure that's, that's it. And Shit, yeah. man. I went back to Pearl Harbor. Yeah, man. I mean. Yeah, the USS Cole bombing was a suicide attack by a terrorist group. Look Al-Qaeda. At- and, yeah, and that we was Al Qaeda. We yeah. were all talking about this October earlier, October twelfth, two thousand. The Taliban, and you know what later morphed into Al Qaeda and all of that, and ISIS, wow. and yeah, and whatever the hell wow. we have now. We started all of that. We funded that. We we promoted that. Yeah, yeah the back CIA. in the eighties, yeah. October twelfth, two thousand. That was right before. Really? Yeah. Hey, when was? Can you look up when was the original World Trade Center bombing? Because I was thinking it was. There was. What, I think it was ninety three. Three. See, that was what I Hold was on. thinking. Like ninety three altogether, wasn't there? I thought before there was just. It came down. I thought there was just the one. Back in the February twenty sixth, nineteen ninety three. Yeah, that's the one I'm thinking of. They they put the bombs. Six people died. They put the bombs, you know, in the parking lots and stuff yeah. underneath the building. They, you know, their plan was. To... But didn't they do that again though? I don't know. I could have sworn, Andrew. They, you're thinking so. I could have sworn they did that twice. They, one thousand over one thousand uh, injuries. Yeah, but six people died. Because I remember being in school. It would have been right after after that. Yeah. Because I graduated in '96, and mm. I remember, you know, them talking about we could see another yeah. one, and yeah. then I remember it happened. There was a lead up. There was a lead up, right? And we, we and it was slowly, all like the news all talked about. We it. Slowly mm-hmm. saw it. Man. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think... Well, that's the beauty of hindsight, though, really. We, yeah. we, we all saw it now. Well, yeah. look at that, though. You have... That happened in 93, and then you had USS Cole happened in 2000. So there's seven years. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure there was also attacks happening that we don't even know about sure. oh, in sure. that seven-year span. Guaranteed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the whole fact that we knew about it, a, a branch of our intelligence knew... And just didn't talk to the other yeah. one. That you know? video. That's a massive mm, failure. Absolutely. After the World Trade Center bombing and that video of Bush at that school, whoever it was, oh, I went yeah. over and told him what happened. The his look on face his face was just like, oh, yeah, fuck. yeah, what because he took a lot of shit because he he didn't get up right away. He finished the book because right. he didn't want to freak the kids out and right. all of that. And and I totally get that. You can't just be like start panicking. You know what? As the leader of the free world, you can't be. Panicking and, right. and and acting different. I miss the days you know, when that was. You have to the, keep your composure. When that was the thing that would mi- would make me mad. I miss those days. Right. Well. Yeah. But I mean, you know, it was great when he went down there to Ground Zero. Yeah, dude. And he was, was down there with the firefighters, man, and he's just like, "We're gonna get these sons of bitches," and everyone else was like, "Yeah, let's go get them, baby." Say what it you was, will about George Bush, he was a good cheerleader. He was. He was literally a cheerleader in college, yeah, too. Yeah. Well, I mean... Dude, he, there's a whole montage of him, like, saying things. And he, it's <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah, there's calendars. Internets. There's calendars with... Every day has a different George Bush quote. Do you guys got internets? George Bush <laughs> seems like the kind of dude, like, he yeah. would probably be all right. Like, if I'm... If I he's the kind of guy you next, can do, like... Bar, he's the kind of dude you can sit down and drink a case of beer with. That's what they want you to think. Yeah. But you're probably right there. No, he... You can definitely... He was a party... You can definitely party drink a case of beer with him, man. you know. Back in the day. Yeah. Do some lines of blow off yeah. a hooker's have, ass, too. Have you cause... seen... Have you seen the the Oliver Stone movie, Bush? Yes, I have. <laughs> I haven't. I have. It wasn't bad. Is that the one with... Josh Groban. Or, yeah, but no, is not that, Josh, it, Josh Groban. <laughs> Josh, Josh Brolin. Brolin. Josh, <laughs> Josh Brolin? Brolin. Jo- no, it was Josh Brolin. Yeah. Yes. Brolin, yeah, yeah. He's not singing like, I'm George Bush. <laughs> I'm George Bush. Oh, no, I'm no, sorry. Not that guy. Okay. But see, I knew who, I knew what you were saying. You did. I like Josh Gropin myself. Gropin? Yeah. 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 I grab myself. Who's Josh Gropin? I don't. I grab myself like Michael Jackson. Hey, have you guys ever seen Kyle Dunnigan's <laughs> videos on uh, Instagram? He does like that face swap stuff. Oh my god! Oh, yeah, on yeah, his yeah, Instagram. Yeah, yeah. dude, it's like I one didn't of the know best the name, follows, but the, the mo- yeah, the moment he does, he said does it. Michael Jackson a lot. He yeah. does uh, the Kardashians. He does the Kardashians. He That's does. Just wrong. Um, oh, dude, it's funny. It's, it's hell. fucking hilarious. 
Yeah. I suggest it. If you're listening to this. Yeah. Dave, what's his name again? Uh, Kyle Dunnigan. Okay. So the only reason I know of Kyle Dun- of Dunnigan, Kyle, Dunnigan. Of Dunnigan mm-hmm. is because of Joe Rogan. Me too. Yeah. 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 He was the one that told me, you know, basically that because he was like kind of like the first dude to really like use the face swap thing mm-hmm. for comedy. Yes. And it was brilliant, yeah. man. No one else used it. Yeah. Use the damn thing. I'm sure a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you felt so passionate like, about the face use swap. Use the damn face swap. Just use the damn face swap. I mean, one guy uses watermelons to crush them. <laughs> yeah. Right. 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 No man, it's t- uh, I'm sure. Carrot Top uses props. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What Top happened Top. to that? Guy? He did he's, steroids. He's and roided boom. up these Dude. days. Let's... So he looked like a he looked like a skinny carrot. Right, right, now right. he looks like a fucking tomato. Now he's a miracle grow carrot. <laughs> right, right. I had a buddy oh, that lived in Vegas that like ran into ran into him at a bar. He's a carrot know. with uh he's a carrot with on steroids. And, and so is he like a decent dude? Because I, I imagine that. he's a prick in real life. I imagine he probably is a prick. He's like, an ugly hey, motherfucker. Which, which way to the gym? You guys remember like his old, like when he would go on to talk shows and bring the like oh, all the props, bucket full yeah. of props. Yeah, yeah. 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 It was kind of cool. At That's the, time. the carrot top I remember. Yeah. And then when he's and then the fact that he was all beefed up right. like that is like just, what is that all? like? And when did that right, happen? Right. I don't know, man. That dude is. He <laughs> kind he kind of fell off the juiced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe yeah. he's just all roided up. Maybe I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, like Snap Randy it. Macho Man Snap Savage, baby. Into a Slim Jim. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's had some facelifts too. It sure looks. Oh like. yeah, yeah, a couple botched ones too, isn't it? Yeah. Listen, man. If there's any young ladies listening to this, which I highly doubt there is, but if but there if are, you are, if you're listening to this, thank just you. Grow old gracefully. Yeah, you don't need don't, that. Don't touch. Don't get. Don't do all that shit. You don't need that no, shit. Just don't. grow I mean, old it, gracefully. If if you got the itty bitties, that's fine. If you feel you need to up them a size or two, I, I that's mean, on I, yeah, you, but you don't need to do it. It's your decision, right. but I right. love you regardless you of what you do. You don't need to do it for me. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'm a man. I do not know how that feels as far as like feeling insecure about something like that. Oh, I, 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 I know how that know. feels. We can just walk around like slobs all day. You yeah, know? exactly. Nobody gives a shit. Yeah. yeah. Girls so aren't that lucky. For me, like as a young man, if I had a we realized if I had a realized when I was 16, 15, 16 that girls were just as insecure as I was at that age, I'd have been fucking devastating. Boys. You'd have been getting laid all the time. <laughs> Guess <laughs> what, buddy? Join the club. Right? You would have yeah. Been, you, yeah. You would have been getting more ass than fucking Backstreet Boys. Oof. Yeah, it's just confidence, man. Yeah, that's all you need. You got, you got to have confidence. Yeah. And girls like a guy that can make them laugh right. too. Yeah. Well, what's that? You. What's that Facebook thing? Uh, the, the, uh, you got to watch out for a guy who makes you laugh because you're laughing, you're laughing, your pants are off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's how it usually works. I could never, like, I was never that guy. Like, I, I was not like the guy that would hook up and. I do, could make you laugh. I couldn't seal the deal though. Me too. I would freeze up. Right. I would get nervous, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was, was a late bloomer. Yeah. <laughs> Uns de ladies not liking me. Mm. But man, to go back in time and right, man, to go yeah. back, have a second. So chance. if you could, okay, question for you, boys. Chance. So if you could go back and start your life all the way over, but you didn't know the outcome, would you? Like if you couldn't take anything back with you, you, you mean just, just you, you it just, was just a hard reset. Yeah, you were automatically born again, blank slate? and you could do it all again. To your same family, yeah, all to that. your same family, but you'd have, same way. But you'd have no memory, of right? Your you previous couldn't, you couldn't take any of the future knowledge with you. No, man, because then it's just it's taking too long. Just, yeah, yeah, fuck that. I don't want to do this shit twice. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to go back. Let again. me do it once. No. Let me die. And okay, well, if you could go back and take all the knowledge with you, would you? Oh yeah, then hell yeah, I absolutely. would. Absolutely. Right. I mean, I... think think about how powerful you would be if you just knew the future one day ahead of time. Mm-hmm. You know, you could go in and buy you some stocks that you knew, knew were going to jack up. You know, yeah. you would be the most powerful person on the planet if you just knew what was going to It's kind of like a superpower one... in a way. A little bit. Yeah. Uh, oh, that'd be a cool foreseeing superpower. The, foreseeing the future. You can only foresee one second into the future. Yeah, man, I need more than a no, second. No, you could do the same thing, though. You just watch all of it. You put it all in. Boom. There you go. I need more than a second. Dude. That would be an awesome superpower. I don't know, man. Yeah. Lock and change in a second. Huh. So, you know, like one of the big arguments about psychics and stuff like that is like if psychics were real, how come they don't just like win the lottery over and over and over again? Right. What do you guys think about that? I don't know. Let's talk about it on the other side. Yeah, let's do that. All I right. actually have a personal psychic story I can involve. 
and it's Andrea's mom. Oh, baby. Whoa. We'll talk about that maybe. Okay. I'm getting the look. The Never mind. The wifey's mother. The okay, maybe she won't be joining us. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the stink eye. She's getting the stink eye. Yeah. All right, so we'll do that next. Yeah. Bitches. <laughs> Call or text the old 77 listener line at 573-246-0779. Hey, girl. Your memories, pregnancy, kids growing up, family, senior year of high school, getting engaged. You want to keep those moments forever. But the problem with most photographers is they decide which moments you keep. They'll sell you a single picture or a big all-inclusive package that might include photos you don't want at a cost that's outside of your budget. That's why I don't. You decide. A single photo, a single hour, you choose. You get all of your edited photos, everything, at Andrew Marie Photography. You get quality photos at prices you can afford. After all, they're your memories. Find us on Facebook, Andrew Marie Photography and Custom Design. want to bring it back i'd love to bring it back Fuck, man bring it back I'm bringing this shit back this all right time. man yeah welcome back to the old 77 we're a safe place in an unsafe world yeah we were talking psychics yes mm-hmm. yeah. and so we were talking about psychics do you guys you guys personally believe psychics we've touched on this a little bit like i don't believe that there's anybody that is going to be 100 percent accurate all the time but I think that there are people who can tap into that, and I think there's sufficient scientific evidence that says that. My, my, I think m- with most people, it's if somebody gets gets it wrong once, then okay, this person must be a fake. I think there's a gray area there. Like you know, you're gonna get it right. We talked about remote viewing, right, mm-hmm. and how those guys, even the best ones, get it wrong sometime. So I think it, and that seems to be the case just with with most of that weird phenomena how, stuff. How do you feel about it, man? I think you have your frauds. Oh, and for I sure. I also oh, think absolutely. you have those those people who are connected into this other like dimension of like spirituality. Mm-hmm. I really do believe that there's a good and bad thing. There, like in any other occupation, there are frauds and there sure. are real right. people who absolutely yeah. are very. You know, you, no matter wired what, for this thing, you're gonna yeah. have people who are grifters. Yeah, you know, they're always gonna, you know. But I think there are legit folks out there that can see beyond what we can see. Right. Th- it's a, it's like a gift. Yeah, it's just like a see? sense. It's an extra sense that some people seem it, to have. It's not a you know an illusion. Right. It's something real. But then there's also people who are just frauds and they just take your money. Well, I mean, yeah. we trust weathermen, right? And they get shit right 90% of the time and then they get shit wrong 90% of the time. Yeah. Yeah, that's so. true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. I I think it's I feel the same way about uh psychics I guess as I do about the UFO community. You have to be really careful with who you right. trust. I feel that way too, right there. Yeah, you've yeah. got to be a good pe- a good person reader. But yeah. I've known people who have went to a psychic and they were like right on. Yeah, me too. Well, Andrea's went to a psychic. You mm-hmm. want you want to talk about your experience? Sure, I've gone twice. The first time I went. Get a little closer there. Okay. She's <laughs> she's on twice. the uh, she's the, on the couch. The we're out of, we're out of couch chairs. Now. Yeah, that's okay. So I've gone twice. Once I was eighteen, and I was very naive. And my mom is all about psychics and I can remember as a kid her going to palm readers and psychics all the time and this one particular lady who had a reputation for being legit was at this bar which is funny because both times I went to a psychic has been at a bar at a bar um but the first time I was seriously 18 um one of my questions was 
at the time I was thinking law enforcement um, and or uh, attorney for major. And I remember asking her, like, do you think that that would be a right fit for me? And she blatantly said, you can't keep a secret. So, no, I don't think that would be right for you. And that's kind of a, a, <laughs> a true fact. Yeah. But I don't know if she was reading my body language to tell me or maybe I was so forthcoming with things because that's another thing. Like, they can read your body language yes. and then ask you those well, yeah. probing questions to kind of go from there. Another one, when I was 18, the same person, but another question I had was, um, I was really good friends with a girl named Angie, and she was getting ready to go off to school about two hours away, and I was going off to school three hours away. And um, I said, do you think that, you know, I just wanted to know, because she was my best friend, I wanted to make sure that she was going to make it in school, and she actually said, no, she's not going to, it's just not going to work out for her. So, fun fact, Angie went to school, mom dropped her off, and within three hours, mom had turned around and came back and got her because she was upset and wanted to come home. <laughs> and she ended up doing two years at community college and then going off to another school, but she lived with a, a good friend of ours from high school. And so I was like, huh, in hindsight now, I'm just like, huh, that, that's interesting. Yeah. And you think she got that right? I think so. And then in true internet fashion, I had a pen pal crush, if you will, that I met, and his name was Jamie, and I asked if I was ever going to meet him, and she told me no, that that just never was going to work out, and I never did meet him. So I, I don't really remember a whole lot other from that experience, just because I was 18, and it didn't really, you know, whatever, okay, big deal. Um, <clears throat> the next experience I had, I would have been 30. So, fast so a little forward, bit of a jump. Yeah. Fast forward a few years, and a pivotal thing happened in my life. I um, lost my grandma, who was my best friend. And I was really struggling with knowing that she was okay and if she would be all right. And so, again, I went to a bar of this psychic who was the real deal. And me and a coworker actually had set up different times to go. Um, she had also just lost someone very close to her. She had lost her husband. He was an overroad trucker and died. And from what the autopsy said, it was not a very pleasant death. Yeah, like, that was horrendous. His truck flipped over into a pond, and oh he basically God. drowned. So they think the guy had a heart attack or something? <laughs> yeah, like it... he had, because she always joked and said if he saw a drop of blood, he would just pass out. So right. she was like, my luck, he probably opened up a can of raviolis, and the can cut him, and he passed out. And we didn't don't ever really know the whole situation. Was, but yeah. circling back to my psychic experience with my grandma, I wanted to know that my grandma was okay. And so... I remember asking her, is my grandma all right? And I didn't, I knew because I was older, I didn't say a whole lot. Like I didn't lead into a bunch of things that she could have used to prompt me. And she was just like, yes. And she is with you all the time. And she said, when you get, when your son gets older, he's going to tell you about all the times that your grandma and him played games together. Because yeah. Jonah as much as my grandma loved me, I think she loved my son more. She did. There and was something there. They yeah. had such a connection that I do often wonder. He said some things later on as he's gotten older, but I don't, I don't know. He's kind of a storyteller, so I don't know how much of that I believe. <laughs> but just hearing that she was okay made me feel, I guess, put my myself at ease yeah. so i mean you can take it for what it's worth i don't know if it's because i was in such grief that i just needed that to like did they tell you what you wanted to hear though right kind of thing but then i also asked about you and i and about moving and they said yeah you'll be moving and i said well will we be moving far away unbeknownst that any of this because him and i so at 30 yeah that would yeah because we yeah. moved here when I was 35. Yeah, that would have been five years before we so came here. So she said, yeah, you're eventually going to move, and it's going to be the right move for you. And the way it made it sound like where we lived at, we lived 15 minutes from everywhere. You had wow. to drive. And so mm -hmm. I thought, oh, we're going to be in the neighboring town. That's where, because we were kind of looking at houses then mm -hmm. in that area. And then other things Yeah, and then happened, and we moved three and a half hours away. So 
But I can honestly say both experiences different, but both of them, I can look back and see certain things and it's like, okay, so maybe there was some light of that, but it's however you take it. I think it's your perspective. I think that's you, a, it's your, your perspective opt- no yeah, matter what. Yeah, your optimism. Are you a half empty right. or a half full? It's however you walk into it. And then... Whatever you do <laughs> with the info. When we were pregnant with our daughter, my mom has this crazy friend who oh susan yeah 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 psychic susan, psychic psychic susan. susan. And she's, oh here we go leading she, in i don't even damn remember, good lead in baby i Is don't like psychic remember chloe how hey, mom, what, about what was going on but she just said i have this feeling you know i'm a psychic right, right i've right? got like sh- i don't know she was an interesting person in herself so just one of those I've, people i think i've met this person maybe once <clears throat> Well, but I've heard a shit ton of stories. Yes, and there's a lot where that and there's goes. a ton of stories. But man. I don't. Can you help me? Because my memory is I've got mom brain. I don't remember half the crap I used to know. Oh, so what? Like, so basically, I, I don't remember any story that you were fixing to tell. I just remember that she had this whole thing where like she claimed she knew stuff, but then at the same time, like really horrible shit would happen to her. And hmm. I'm like, well, d- she's a psychic. Shouldn't she have seen that shit coming? Right. So yeah, like she told me when right. we were like, pregnant with Katie that Katie was a girl. And I'm like, well, you got a 50-50 shot. Yeah, right. yeah, you're yeah. Right. It was like, well, she's either a girl or a boy. Yeah. I need more proof than that. Right, exactly. Yeah. You know, I mean, if she had been like, she's going to be a pistol spitfire, I would have believed her. Right. You would have said, she's a, definitely a psychic. She's definitely, <laughs> she's de- ooh, you a psychic and shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you had anything happen to you, Dave? Not with psychic. No I've, psychic reading or I mean, I, I told you guys. That I think, surprises me with you. I know, I need to do that. Right, to be honest. If um, you can find a legit one in the area, I am down. I will do it with you. My mom was always really into that stuff, too. Mm-hmm. So my, my mom my mom was, too, mm-hmm. to be honest. She mm-hmm. loved that. Do you guys remember... Uh, Shit, I don't remember the year, but it would have been on the Sci-Fi John Channel. Edwards? John Edwards. Yeah, I remember him. That guy used to do it live, and I remember he would say that, like he he never was told anything. It would just be images that would pop in his head, mm-hmm. and he'd be like, uh, "Does anybody recognize a red bicycle?" And people would raise it up, and he'd be like, right. uh, "What about a red bicycle next to uh, an orange car?" And then people, you know, throw their hands down or whatever, and there'd be that one person, mm-hmm. and then he'd go on and on, and they'd be like, "Yes, yes," and yeah. he'd be like, "Well, then you must be the one that I'm here to talk to." Oh wow! But didn't they prove it was amazing later That's cool. that he was a fraud? See, I thought that they tried to. They tried to throw that whole thing like you were talking earlier, that he was just reading people. Yeah. But he, he used to do it in a... So this is what always threw me, because he would come out and there would be a gallery of people. And, you know, it could be now that I'm in the business and I know how that shit works. Yeah. Maybe it was scripted. I right. don't know. Maybe he knew. But, the... Right. But he would come out and then he would even do it out and about. But he would just he would start doing that, like whipping out different scenarios and different things. And, Mm -hmm. you know, at first, a shitload of people would have their hands up. But then it would you know, he would always narrow it down. And then he would be like you. So from his point of view, like he doesn't have any control of what he sees. That's that's how he explained it. He always said that it was just the strongest the right. strongest spirit. It, it was like yeah. a, like a fight. pulse. Like they would fight for attention. Yeah. That they the knew that. One yeah, did. they knew he could read them, and so they would fight for his attention. And you'd get things thrown at you, and you know maybe it would be for one person, maybe it would be for two. Isn't mm-hmm. that that Teresa? I think it's Teresa Romero. She's this one, maybe on Lifetime. She's got like the typical Karen haircut. Yes. And she has the real thick accent and and talks, and she does a very similar shtick if you will Mm -hmm. i don't know much about her i think they call her what the long island psychic or something like that i I don't know anything about her other other than that she has the hair and haircut yeah do you guys remember sylvia brown i was just gonna say that montel didn't she just she passed away didn't she she passed away she was on montel all the time and i this is what my wife tells me i guess one is i guess one of the things that sylvia brown predicted was that there was going to be this bad virus in the year 2020 yeah and that the second wave was going to be worse than the first yeah i I remember i just saw something on that the other day that sylvia brown predicted all of this but didn't you and i have discussion about how pandemics 
back in We've, history. All of us, all had, of us here have. Had the wave, like the first part of it, and yeah. then they have the second wave. Right. It's just history repeating If you follow itself. history every hundred years yeah. or so, we have a pandemic. Yeah. And it's usually right around this time. Yeah, yeah. It's weird. Yeah, and there's a whole, there's a whole you know, swath of videos on the internet about mm-hmm. Sylvia Brown and trying to discredit her there's a lot of people that think that mm-hmm. she was a fraud too right and they do that all the time and have i you, don't and i don't know have no. you guys watched uh, dead files i've seen a couple but so not many the psychic medium on there her name's amy allen mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and she's like i feel like she's legit so basically like one side is you know it's investigated by this former new york detective yeah. right but then amy allen is the psychic so they like basically come up with their own summary then they compare at the end of the show. Yeah, I think I've seen that. It matches up yeah. everything he, he does, like what? the history of the That's place. That's what I who like lived that there. show, though, because sometimes they don't match up. Yeah, but yeah, and sometimes it doesn't match right. up. But yet it's it's somewhat kind of close. Well, I'd rather. And it's it. really it's a really good show. And it's creepy as hell, dude. I need to watch the one with Aaron and Aaron. Yeah, the yeah. Aaron's. It was a good. It was a good episode. Can you find that like on YouTube? Do you know? I'm Boy, sure I you don't find know, parts man. of you it. You could probably. Yeah. I can find I, it. I, I don't, find but it. also, if, can, if not, I can get Aaron to. Uh, sure. Yeah, he, he might have it. Send it. Send so it you're way. friends with Aaron, right? And you already reached out to Aaron on behalf of the show, like what? Oh, a while ago. I yeah. mean, acquaintances with him. Let's just put it that way. Acquaintances. Okay. Um, hmm. But yeah, he did a headshot for my boss, and we were just talking about different things. And and then when you guys started your podcast. And you kind of mentioned it. I sent him a message saying, hey, you know, my my husband and his buddies do a podcast. Would that be something that they could ask you a question about? And he was like, yeah, sure. Because I think at the time you guys were talking about doing one in collaboration. Yeah, we were actually talking about doing one there. How cool that would be. Yeah. Okay, well, and maybe Allie, I misunderstood and, it. And after la- and I told you to hold off because we weren't quite there yet. We're there now. Yeah, we have yeah. the capability of because doing after it yeah after last week. Oh yeah, we could take this show on right. the road. Yeah, that but sounded really good. I can reach really out good. to him yeah. again. Yeah, and see. Well, and my wife is an acquaintance with the other Aaron. And see, it's funny because your wife sent me a Facebook message the oh. other day. I know she yeah. did. Yeah, yeah, about now. What was so it? Aaron? Girl Aaron. Yeah. So it's. Aaron with a an E, right? Yeah, right. And right. then Aaron the with an A. a. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. boy Aaron. So, yeah. <laughs> it's it's so weird. It's Aaron Clark married Aaron Clark. Yeah. They're they're a couple. Her maiden name wasn't Clark. No, 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 no. Well no, but well, but now she is. Yeah. Right. Aaron and Aaron. Right. It's the pretty Aaron's. awesome. They so, seem like really like right. interesting so people. So Girl man. Aaron yeah, was on sure. a on a podcast, right? Is it her podcast? I don't know. I don't think so. It was they went to St. Louis and it was something to do with Hobo Hill. Yeah. Cuz I saw that Aaron had some pictures up from their being on um this podcast and they That's cool. they're so funny and witty that they had some like fun little banter to go with it, but oh, Of course. Yeah. Dude, their story is legit. Yeah. Oh, right. I mean, if I woke up in the middle of the night and Sloan was walking around on oh hallways, God. Just like kind of in a trance, right? I would freak the hell well, out. Well, yeah. and if you look at there, I'd be like, "What the f- is going on here, man?" How old was that? How old was that girl? Um, she was under see. what? She's, under two? She's no, 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 no. At the she, time, she might no, have been four or five. No, maybe? she was a little bit older. She's like really? kindergarten age. Okay. Because okay. I was say she went to the kids' at school for a little bit. Oh, okay. Right, right. Um, and yeah. she was in, I think, I want to say third grade this year. So okay. that maybe, and that's been a few years ago mm-hmm. that happened. Right. Man, I get chills just thinking about that story, especially the part of that story where the little girl, you know, uh, uh, apparently is like possessed by whatever entity oh, yeah, was in the house. Oh yeah, she's in the bathtub and she just looks over at her mom and she's like, gives her like this weird smile. Yeah, and then yeah, that's what throwing uh, her baby brother out the window. Yes, I was. Yeah. And after that, they then like walking around and then. Like, they put her to bed, but then she just gets up walking around. Like, all I can think is, is it Poltergeist from when we were little? And the little yeah. girl's like, they're here. Oh, yeah, that movie freaked me out. I yeah. just remember that little girl was sitting in front of the TV, and it was just static. And she's having a conversation with someone. Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. And then, oh, no, no, Really no. strange. I can't come to the light. No. Aaron talks about, mm-hmm. the female talks about being in bed and feeling something is on her chest. Girl, yeah. she can't. Yeah, girl, Aaron. And she can't get up 
because there's something holding her down. You right. know what? That's, that's exactly horrifying. like that's sleep paralysis. That's exactly what happens with most people when they have sleep paralysis. Is they back is, that mic up just a hair? There, is man. they they there they go. get a sensation like somebody's on their chest. Yeah, and mm-hmm. they can't get off. Well, uh, and they can't get them off. Uh, so they they rent this home out so you can do yeah, Airbnb. It's, it's an Airbnb. Airbnb now. Thank you. Yeah. I couldn't remember if it was mm-hmm. BRBO or which one it was. I don't but, remember. So which I was on looking that. it up the other day and looking at the listing, and it actually says that you're allowed the free reign of the house except for the third floor. And the third floor is where they would hear a lot of different noises and where it was a dad and his son. Yeah. There was a lot of activity from them. In particular, That's, and the son was the one yes. that I think was the aggressive one. Mm-hmm. So they, yeah, because on that de- I watched that episode of that that Dead Files. They said that the, the psychic woman said that he would hurt someone. Mm-hmm. But they had so many different characters, spirits, whatever you would like to call them, right. in yeah. that house. Like I think there was one, two, it was like five or six, three wasn't or there? four different. For sure that I know of, because you had the father and the son, right. and then you had another male figure that was really aggressive. Yeah, yeah. And then there was a girl. Yeah, I remember the girl. And they thought the girl was the daughter of the old warden the old from, warden. like, back right. in the day. And, yeah. But then, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but the house next to them, they just bought it, too, gray right? Gray Lady? The Gray Lady is haunted as well. Is that right? And it's right next door to... And it's right next door. And it was the daughter, eventually, her and her husband bought it, but then they had to do some... They had to sell something to yeah. give dad money. And that was the that was the dad that was the guy who was the other aggressive guy. He was the dad that owned the place and lost it. Mm-hmm. And so he tried his entire life to get it back. Wow. But couldn't. And their basement is very creepy from what you can see of it. If you go on and look at the... Okay, so didn't something happen... Down in the basement of that house. To Aaron, he would go down there and get stuff. And he, I'm sure something happened previously to cause that, but I know he went down there and he said he would feel. I don't know if it was instant cold or it felt like somebody was touching him. I, it's been a long time since we've watched like it was like, that. Yeah, he was someone like, was right. watching you, like yeah. staring you in the face without them being there. No, thank you. Jeez, that's yeah. horrifying. And yeah, enough- I definitely think you guys should go there because I'm not gonna <laughs> go there. No, I would. Listen, if, if I'd like to go there and record an episode, Me too. I threw this at Matt just jokingly. But if I they was hear, like, if they if they hear this, know. I mean, and yeah. we'll try to get in touch with. Them. Yeah, we'll we'll do that again, definitely. Yeah, the other interesting thing about that house, the, the other thing I remember from that video that they put up on Facebook a while back was like, this was going to be their forever home. Yeah, like this mm-hmm. was where they and was, they really did it up too. Man. Yeah, they spent a lot of time on it. Like I get the impression it killed girl, them. Girl, Aaron. She, I read an article here the other day. They just celebrated their anniversary, and she said that huh, I found a house, and it was like, surprise, honey, we're gonna like redo this house. And so, like, real estate is a big thing for them. They have rental air- properties in I think Kansas City area, and then they do a lot of flipping around here as cool. well. And so, Aaron, girl, Aaron, and then her mom are big into like restoring things and. I kind of joke around and say there's that um, show on HGTV where they are in Laurel, Mississippi, and they're trying to make all the old, yeah, old things shiny. And I kind of feel like these guys are like the local mm-hmm. couple that's doing that because it always seems to be like a couple team on there that right. th- that do those home renovating shows. But, yeah, like they went in with the admiration and the hopes of – this is where we're going to, you know, have our family. And, and that's a really, I mean, that house where it sits has a oh, it's unique beautiful. perspective of the view of yeah. the city. And, and I went to school right across the street yeah. at Simonson, yeah. which is now, <clears throat> which was pretty ju- well destroyed they, by the tornado. I would say they just sold it. Yeah. What are they going to do with that building? I don't know. I heard, but I can't remember what, what it was. I'm sure somebody has a use for it, though. Because they're redoing it. Yeah, well, I yeah. mean, you know, the bulk of that building is brick. Well, well, that whole area, man, that that whole area got hit, just decimated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Those two houses on the hill there, right three. above Hobo. And they had some damage there. The, yeah, yeah the that's... Um, yeah, they did. That was an, a judge that used to be... I think he's retired now, but a judge in this area. Uh, my previous boss is really good friends with his wife. They would watch their Outlander 
They <laughs> called themselves the Outlander Girls. Yeah, they'd go out and watch the Outlander. But um, when they had the tornado hit, she remembers getting a call from the wife saying, we're okay, just lost our roof. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, I know that house you're talking about. That yeah. whole roof was gone. It's the stone house. Yeah, like, those, those houses are awesome. I love Yeah, those. there's a lot of cool houses in that yeah. part of town. I used I to live those. on that side of town. Yeah. and just Dude, to, There's a lot of... It's like, a lot of unique there's a lot architecture, of, but there's a lot of paranormal activity around Jeff City. Seems like it. The other hot spot like, being the prison. The prison, right? I mean, yeah. there's tons of stories. Now, yeah. d- I I don't know too much Jeff City lore, but wasn't there an old speakeasy here? A couple of them and a couple of shine like runs. I don't know underground. I don't know. They found like underground tunnels. Yeah, under like MSP and. Yeah, I was thinking MSP. Uh, uh, there was a couple under uh, the courthouse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, that's now that's the kind of cool stuff. The old gangsters, you know. That's Can another, you imagine gangster Jeff City? That's another episode that we should do. Go to MSP. Yeah, that would be cool. So, dude, when you're, do, have you ever taken a ghost tour there? I've not done the ghost tour, but I've done like the regular daytime tour. So have you? Have I you? did two night tours when I first got oh, here. Shit, oh shit! I no didn't kidding. know. I didn't realize you'd done. How that was already. that? Did uh, you see it's anything? Totally creepy. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, the, and that would have been back in the day. The while prison it was, all was still standing. There was a lot more of it standing yeah. back right. when I first got here. Yeah. But we would go through. We they take you through the uh, the women's part of the prison. Mm-hmm. They tell you stories and and whatnot. And then Is they it take like you around. chained heat going through the women's prison. Was it like chained heat? I don't know. It's smaller. There was like a smaller space, and the the uh, doorways were smaller and stuff like that. It's kind of it's kind of nuts. Yeah, it was. A, but it like was the, a funny story, well, not a funny story, but like a weird story. Like there were inmates who were pregnant, like the female inmates. Yeah, like they would have babies in prison. Immaculate conception, right? I don't know what happens to the baby after that. They go, the baby goes oh, to the sure. family, or I'm sure they either they didn't raise babies in prison. I don't know. So they probably went to the orphanage wards of the state. And mind you, it's it's dark. You know, like we all have like little miniature flashlights and stuff yeah. like that. That would and, suck. And no it's problem. all about your tour guide. If you right. have a really good tour guide, your 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 experience is going to be phenomenal. Yeah. One of the one of the main tour guides. I don't know if he still is now, but his mm-hmm. name is Mark Schreiber. And Schreiber, yeah. I worked with Schreiber when I worked at DOC. Mike Lear too. Mike Lear is yeah, really. I've heard his he's name. He's very yeah, knowledgeable I've, I've guy. Heard of that guy. Yeah. He's a, I think he's a he's actually a, a Jeff City historian. Yeah. Um, yeah. Schreiber's Hasworth knows. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Man, Mike, House knows Mike everyone. He sure yeah. does. I'm sure he probably yeah. knows Schreiber too. Schreiber's got a couple books yeah. also about that prison. But I've they got al- they also take you to the de- where they kept the death row uh, prisoners. Yeah, out. I've been there. To so, the death row area? Yeah. So when That's I was weird. taking pictures, dude, like I, I had some pictures. I don't know what I – I had a different phone back then. Mm-hmm. I was just taking like just tons of pictures, and then some of the pictures had like orbs in them. Yeah. Weird shit. Really? Chill. Yeah, and it wasn't like just dust. It, I mean, it, you could tell like there was something there. Yeah. But like when it was all dark and you're, you're looking through all these different cells, you can just feel something yeah. like – watching yeah. you you can feel there's a certain energy in there yeah absolutely absolutely you man. don't want to be there for long there was a girl that i worked with for a short while that did one of those overnight overnight mm-hmm. things there and one of the she was into paranormal stuff and one of the things that the, that those people like to do is they'll go in somewhere and they'll take uh like an audio recorder with them yeah. and they'll just hit record and just let it record all night and then when they go back and listen to it yeah like they will ask questions and they won't hear anything. And then when they go back and listen to it, they hear shit. And she played an example of that back for me. And it just, I mean, it was clear as day. So I was actually what, thinking. What did it say? I'm I can't sorry, remember. Scott. It was, but it was clear as day. That's crazy. Yeah, man. Man. It's weird. I was actually thinking if we can, and then we're allowed and we do go and record at Hobo House, Hobo Hill, that we just run an extra mic. Yeah. Like, we just run it to open air mm-hmm. and just see if it picks anything up. Mm-hmm. That and would be so freaky. Wouldn't that if be freaky, happened? though? We do a show, we go back, and yeah. it would probably be Matt and I because we're the, we're the editors. So we'd go back and we'd be editing it, and all of a sudden there'd be something that wasn't now, there. If I'm at home and I hear something like that on a recording, I will freak the shit out. Dude. I know. <laughs> we need to record you guys editing. <laughs> Right? Yeah. I would shit my pants. I would be like, what in the world was that? <laughs> so that's called, I think that's called EVP. Right, right? EVP. Like yeah. Electro, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, electro. Dude, there's science behind it, man. There's yeah. all kinds of science and, and all kinds of gadgets that you can 
sidebar you know, conversation investigate paranormal oh, stuff yeah, yeah but if you if you believe that 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 particular science works or mm-hmm. yeah you know i man i i don't know sidebar conversation uh so you guys have heard of like um like lie detector machines yeah and how those like aren't admissible in court right so one of the things that they have at doc like if you're under investigation i know this because i was under investigation at one time <laughs> Uh, is they have, um, I forget the abbreviation, but it's like a com- computerized, like a voice stress analysis. Oh. They an- they ask you questions. Do they put you in a room and uh, constantly record the room? They, no. they put you in a room and they ask you questions yeah. and then they go back and they mm-hmm. listen to the recording and, yeah. and I guess there's like fluctuations huh. in your voice that that's give away if you're being truthful or not. Uh. And apparently that's much more accurate than um, like your standard old school lie detector is test. Is that admissible in court? I think it might be or, or at least like... Like, um, you know, like I think that they use it to determine outcomes of investigations, at least. Yeah, that's you know, frightening. Interdepartment investigations. That we have, as, we as a species, have evolved so far that we can tell, you know, just by the way you talk. Dude, that we're you're lying. We're right. basically yeah. to the point now where, like, our thoughts are going to be read. You know, Elon Musk is hooking. I was just going to say that. He's hooking these Neuralink things into yeah, pigs. And he just proved that that. The, the brain and a and a computer chip can talk to each other. Yeah. Did you did any of you guys watch the video of that where I he didn't. like the little demonstration where he brought the pig out? No. So like whenever the pig's snout would touch something, like if he would sniff something or if somebody would feed him, anything where there was like a interaction with his like snout a stimulation. Then then the thing would beep. They had like a you know, like a they had the Neuralink thing set up to audio so you could That's tell, <laughs> you know, when it was firing and yeah, man, it was interesting. Interesting. Uh, I yeah. would not recommend watching the entire perf- the entire thing, but it, like if you can find a little five minute mm, synopsis right. of it, it's worth watching. And that's why I believe there has to be like something more than than just this life. It has to be. There's too much. Not everything is science. Like everything, there has to be some kind of you energy. Need, you need some mystical electricity, man. Mm-hmm. That's out there that we. When Sir, we die, we we go to this place. Yeah. You know, we go to we either come back reincarnated or we can have a choice to stay wherever we want to go. You know, it's up to us. There's a lot of evidence for that, man. If you so. would have said if 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 I would have told Dave five years ago that I would have said you were crazy. But then I actually started reading books about it and studying it mm. and finding out that like reputable researchers and colleges and universities have studied this stuff and come to the conclusion that at least to some degree a lot of this stuff is real psychic phenomenon um yeah you believe in reincarnation then like you said i do believe in reincarnation because I I've, because i've studied it and 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 uh, so the university of virginia has like thousands of cases of people of kids with these memories from past lives yeah. and they've gone back and verified that these were real people. Well, that That's one story with the kid, James Leninger, yeah, the kid yeah, that yeah, had James memories Leninger. of being a fighter pilot in world the, war yeah. two. And he and knew the he knew yeah. the name of the plane and he knew the name of the co-pilot. He knew and, way too much. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I think some of that is actually on unsolved mysteries. You know, I think I seen some of that on unsolved. Oh mysteries. yeah, sure. Yeah, they've done. They've done. Episodes. Damn, we all go back to unsolved mysteries, mm-hmm. right? I can't and wait guess for that what? second there's, season. There's a new season. That's coming. right. Can't wait. We don't know what's going to be on there, other than there's at least going to be one ghost. I story. know one thing that's going to be on there. What that theme is going to scare the uh, shit out. I love yeah. it. It's the best theme music, right? To Even any today, show ever, yeah. it's the best, but it's the worst because it still freaks me the <laughs> fuck out. Still, it's like oh, the most. It's so much anxiety mm-hmm. in yeah. that one opening. When I go back and Whoa. listen to our episodes, when you guys insert that shit into the episode, <laughs> and I got to listen to it again and be traumatized and relive being a fifth grader in my mom's duplex covering up the windows because I was terrified that an right. alien was going to come in. You know what? I'm me. also glad they did. They didn't like try to replace like Robert Stack. Yeah, they, yes. they're doing it like more just like documentary. Yeah, style. like that's no, not no need for a host now. Dude, yeah. You can't follow that guy. He's a legend. Shout out to Robert Stack. A national dude. treasure, that dude. Yeah. He's and, a badass. Uh, you can't follow up. Even if they did try to, I'd hate to be that person try, right. try to follow Robert. You know, well, well like, you no. do you try to do a bad Robert Stack impersonation? Like, Tonight on right. Unsolved Mystery, it had that voice. His right. his voice was so. Do you guys remember him in oh. uh, an airplane? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's so yeah. like I quick picked the picked pick the it. wrong. No, that, that it's like I picked him, the. Oh no, that was a different guy. That was wasn't a different it? Yeah. Dude, yeah. No. Have you ever seen a grown man naked? Uh-huh. Do you wanna? 
<laughs> I love that movie. I love that movie so much. Do you like Gladiator movies? Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, well, excuse me, excuse yeah. me, stewardess. I speak jive. So I just said that the other day when I walked out of the bathroom the 70s, for some reason. Baby. I just thought that just popped in my head, and I'm uh-huh. like, "Excuse me, sir, I, I speak jive. <laughs> I can recite some of the jive from yeah. that movie, dude. Yeah. The seventies, like those movies, and early in the eighties, man, oh, they got yeah. away with with so much. They did." Man. It's interesting. Like, like, half those movies you can't even like. Oh, you can't remake, remake them the way they Could are. Could you imagine remake like word for word remaking no. Blazing Saddles? Oh my god! Oh right? no, 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 no! People would have <laughs> a fit about that. That was supposed to be Richard Pryor's movie, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, he wrote was, it. He was supposed he to wrote, be the lead. He Did was he just, really? They, they yeah. considered him just a tad too racy at the time, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so they picked Cleavon Little. Mm-hmm. Who did a great job? Don't I'll get me wrong. I'll tell you what, that movie would have been a lot better with Richard Pryor in it. Oh, it would have been a lot. Filthier. It would have killed. It would yeah. have been. I think it would have been more legendary. I mean, it goes down as like a ro- really funny movie. Yeah. But like, it would have been a legendary movie with Pryor in it. Right. Unpopular opinion. I fell asleep twenty minutes into watching it. So she doesn't like it. I think it's a guy thing. It is definitely a guy thing. Yeah. yeah. So I'm sure there are those ladies no, out there that yeah. enjoy it, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. not this one. <laughs> So like, but what? Because like, I can't get my wife to watch hardly any comedies. Like, she's not a big comedy person. I love comedies. Okay. I just that particular movie is lost on me. Yeah. The same with like, uh, Where Art Thou? Lost on me. What about like Naked Gun? I love Naked Gun. They're man. they're fine. They're stupid. OJ oh. going over the rail. Oh my god, OJ. Love it. <laughs> yeah, they got the chalk outline right. in the water. <laughs> Dude, the juice man. The juice is loose. So the juice is on Twitter. Hey, Twitter world, this is yours truly. Now, coming soon to Twitter, you'll get to read all my thoughts and opinions on just about everything. Oh, God. I heard that, I yeah. And so it. he's always on there. And he's and getting savagely he, blasted. He opens up every time. He goes, mm. hey, Twitter world. At the real OJ32 is the only official one. So it should be a lot of fun. I got a little getting even to do. So God bless. Take care. Like people just destroy this guy. I, mean, I get what he did. It's a horrible, horrible thing that he did. Yeah. I mean, come on now. He did it. I know he went to court oh, and he was right. found right. not guilty. But come let's on, be man. honest with ourselves. He's guilty. He did come it. on. Yeah, he definitely did it. But like, he's on Twitter and he's <laughs> he wrote a book called "If I Did, I did It, did it. Right. Well, Without the If." <laughs> Hello, Twitter world. This is uh, yours truly. You know, this is my first venture into the social media world, and uh, it's amazing. He talks you know? about his fantasy team, and then you'll see comments below, and he'll be like, killer team, Juice. <laughs> <laughs> People just rail on this dude. And he's like, you know, today was a hard week, and then, like you see someone comment, and it's like, yeah, it was hard. It must have been hard killing two people with r- one r- night, right? right? <laughs> like, seriously, well, th- this is the stuff that's on his thread. Oh, I believe it. Yeah. Was it I as hard it. as your, your, your ex-wives or whatever? Hey, you know? Twitter world. You know, for years, people have been able to say whatever they want to say about me. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, the list goes on. People oh are, God. like, so crea- creative in the way they I was going to say, that's, that should be, like, an entire subset of comedy, just the talking ju- shit on Juice's Twitter. Oh, God. <laughs> that's dude. so ripe for, yeah. In any event, that's it for today. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. You know, Take care. a couple people. <laughs> well, yeah, he was on Naked Gun. He, dude, OJ was on like, um, he was on like rental car commercials back in the day. Yeah, uh, he, Hertz, Hertz, Hertz rental car. Like, OJ, oh. and he's like running through the like yeah, the crowd, doing through, like the football moves right. and everything. It hurts yeah. so good. Juice. God bless. Does it's it's amazing how this guy can just go on with his life after everything that he did. Well, you know, he's and gangster, like try man. to be like a civil human being, right? right. Well, there's no gangster. there's no double jeopardy, so he can come he there can come go. out tomorrow and just tell us that he did it and he'd be cool. So my history teacher back in high school, our history teacher back mm-hmm. in high school, he used to have this thing. He he wished that if you if you ran for president, then and and you won, then you could spell any way you wanted. Mm. Right? That was his thing. And another one was is if you you did a crime, you know, and you were found guilty that you had to say at the end whether you did it or not. Because they couldn't charge you for it. Right. It's like, come on, man, tell me. Just tell us. Just tell us. Yeah, people placing bets. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Two, I got two, two dollars on yeah, aggravated yeah, assault. Right, right. Could, but, you know, like, okay, so, like, the juice. Could you imagine that trial going on right now? Oh, with all the with it all the social, social media, media. It would be bananas, and, and the, the paparazzi. Here's a, I'll go even, go even further. When juice was driving down the highway oh. and, and the Bronco. Dude, he could have been doing like Snapchats from inside. Right. I mean, like, 
I didn't do it, guys. Live I streaming. Didn't do it. He's he like, would have been doing it. But the militarist, like militaristic style with the police force now, they would have shot him out, you know? Whatever. His car would have been just shut down. Right. Oh, well, yeah, he would have had a newer car. Depending on yeah. the Al shut Collins, the man. Up. Al Collins had him yeah. lined up. Al yeah. was the homie that was driving, right? Yeah. 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 That was his boy, man. That was his best friend. Yeah. 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 Hey, Twitter world, this is yours truly. Now. Hey, you killed your whole family. <laughs> You got away well, not his kids, not his kids. Well, you know. But what do you think his kids think, dude? That's like, oh. yeah, my dad killed my mom and dad. So yeah, how's Thanksgiving? Man. Right. Awkward, probably. Do, do you watch Dad carve the turkey? Ooh. Right. Right. Ooh, do you give him isotoners? <laughs> right. They, Is that not an acceptable fit, Father's Day do gift? They, do they fit correctly? <laughs> right. <laughs> and do you do that on purpose? <laughs> Just to just right, to watch him, right? But, you know, you, you look back at that, and the prosecution should have never had him oh, wear man. that glove. No, man, that was like the turning point. And it's like, dude, it, the, the gloves. But he been... had the dream team though, working for, yeah, for the I Jews. Mean, all that, all that, yeah. If the gloves don't fit, you must acquit. <laughs> all that DNA, right? Oh my god! Oh yeah. my god! That was like the first real. That was right. like when most the the public that, first found out about so DNA. That, that was Everyone's back, like, "What the hell's DNA?" That was yeah. back when you did a DNA test, and that destroyed the DNA. Now they they don't have to do that. Oh, I see. I didn't know. So that. like they lost a shitload because they tested it. I remember right, that was a big right. thing. Mm -hmm. So if we had today's like you know. Technology! Oh right. my God, they would have. Oh, if they would have nailed if, that if guy. If we had the today's wall. forensics, we would have. They would have locked his ass up. There's a whole gang of guys. Would have been guilty. Just CIS. There's a whole gang of guys, just like Golden State Killer, that are just waiting to be caught right, right now. Well, Gibbs he's done. Well, he's done. But there's a lot of people out there that aren't done yet that they, will be yeah. once their uncle decides to spit into an ancestry. Uh, it's so nice to see like that guy forever in prison. Yeah, that's great. That's great. But the whole fact, the way they caught him, is why I won't use those ancestry things. I've done. I don't care. Yeah. You know that 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 you get all my you know all my stuff. I that you're finding killers. That's great. I don't want my info though known. Yeah, that info's in a database now somewhere. Right, and I have done the ancestry thing. And if I could go back in time, I probably wouldn't do it for that reason. Well, not that I'm out killing anybody, but right I, at the same time, it's a privacy concern. Yeah. That, that, I don't know. That worries me. Well, there's a reason why it exists because now it's a trap. Like, look, look at this really cool thing to do. Right. And then the, gov the government's like, "Yep, do right. it." Exactly. Do yeah, it. Well, I'm ahead. pretty sure that's what we're in the, the. They're in our pockets. Yeah. I'm guaranteed that's what it is. I'm the only reason why they're allowed to exist is probably because they had government approval. I'm pretty sure the government Think is about that. pretty happy about all most of us being on Facebook these days. Tagging oh, each other, tagging yeah. friends. Because we're voluntarily right. giving them most of their oh, yeah. shit. We're building their database for We're them. signing contracts. Yeah. We agree. You know. Hey, who was that, that? This is why Facebook, Twitter, Instagram is all free. Yeah. Yeah, right. This. Cause so do you guys remember the um, – I'm going to match it up here. Who was the um, – humanoid on uh, Star Trek The Next Generation. Data. So Data, doesn't he look like Mark Zuckerberg? Oh, he lot? totally reminds <laughs> me of Mark Zuckerberg. A little bit. Yeah, they, he They could be does. like twin brothers yeah, or something. Yeah, they, they have a look. I don't know that it's necessarily the look more than it's like the way that they talk. I think talk. It's, it's the profile and the way they carry yeah. themselves. Yeah. Because Zuckerberg's Zuckerberg, like very like, robotic. Yeah, yeah like right. he does not seem like he has real human emotions. I just imagine having sex with him would be like, Oh my God. Enter, <laughs> return, Right. Enter, He's like that return. dude from Grandma's Boy. Right. Adios, turd nuggets. I am a genius. I am a genius. How much do clothes cost in the Matrix? He's walking around. I'm thinking of getting metal legs. It's a risky operation, but it'll be worth it. He's married now or something. Yeah. He's been yeah. married, dude. Yeah, he's, he's got a kid, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah. He's a little he's got robot, his own too, little probably. Robot. Hello. Hello, father, you cock. Please sit on my feet. Dude, if there was such thing as a humanoid, I would think that he's a fucking humanoid. <laughs> he seems to not, yeah. Because he looks like a, right. a goddamn robot, mm, man. He, that part was perfect for him. He's just a smart dude that got lucky. Mm, hello. He wasn't the first. The right place, the right time, the right um, technology. It was, 
You know, I feel sorry for the big homie Tom from MySpace. Yeah, you guys remember Tom? Tom? Right, right. Dude, I don't. He's probably living it up right now. Uh, you know, on a beach somewhere. Spending all that MySpace money, I man. remember somebody talking shit on Tom on the internet once. It may have even been on Facebook. And Tom <laughs> replied and told him like how much he was worth and yeah. oh, shut yeah. the dude down. Yeah, Tom's right, doing right. just fine. Tom's fine. Tom's I'm, okay. I'm not worried he about He probably Tom. has some kind of like stake in Facebook anyway. He probably you know, has. He might. he might have some stock in it. He might because MySpace is shut down now, right? Yeah, MySpace. Is no, it's in. not. But, but it's, it's not. The, it's not. It's what not it what it was, though. I don't think it's, anybody's there. No, it's nobody's something there. else now. I mean, you can't go back and look at your old no, MySpace you can't, page, no. can you? Yeah. No, because no, I tried to, man. Because I had like um like a, a couple music production pages. Yeah. Do you guys remember MySpace though? Like you can go and get, like one of those playlists and have like your top ten oh, yeah. songs on your your top ten songs on there. Seems so silly now, doesn't it? It does. I'm like, why did we ever waste so much time on that shit? What I find funny Because is... it was different. Yeah. yeah. Like, you, we can select our own backgrounds and stuff oh, like that. It that was, was the whole thing with my but space. It was to... much more cust- customizable. But you had, to, you had to know HTML a little bit, though. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I did. But it wasn't very, like, oh, com- it wasn't very complicated at all, though. No, cut and copy. No. Yeah, I was going to say, you can go in and go to websites that do all that shit for you and just right. copy and paste it yeah. all. My MySpace, dude, was <laughs> fucking hooked up. Was it rocking? Oh, dude, I, I had refused. a great background. I had I had a fucking, the playlist that I had on there was amazing. God, oh, I don't yeah. even, like, remember. I was like, yo, check out my MySpace. <laughs> yeah. I don't even remember. I mean, I had a MySpace, but I yeah. could not tell you what the fuck my background was yeah, or I what my song. I made my a couple space pages. MySpace is your space. Uh, MySpace uh, is your uh, space. Uh, uh. Uh. Walk Cinderella could get one more time. Walk, walk my up, space. Put it in. Uh. <laughs> it's my space. My space, bitches. But then, like, you go from MySpace and then you find out what Facebook is. And you're right. like, holy shit, this is so much better. Well, I remember seeing just a couple months ago on Facebook, somebody was like, wouldn't it be great if you could put, like, songs on our page? You know, and when you came to the page, it would play our song. Fucking MySpace. That's MySpace. That's like MySpace. we've come full circle now. Like hello, people are on the platform that don't remember MySpace. Yeah. Do, do you, you th- think Facebook is going to do that? We're no. going to have songs on no. our homepage. No. I'm, I'm really like, and I'm, I'm glad there is social media, but I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of sick of like Facebook. Yes, and yeah, I get yeah, it. Dude. I'm with you there. It's a very yeah. love hate relationship for yeah. me. Yeah. Um, but do you ever, do you think there'll ever be another social, social media platform? That will overtake Facebook. Like, say MySpace was taken over by Facebook. Will there yeah. ever be another? Yeah, I think so. Another well, stage. I think if things that's bigger than what if, we have now. If things were left to happen naturally, the answer would be yes. But I think the most likely answer now is that if anybody threatens to take Facebook's throne, they're going to throw a shit ton of money at them and buy them out. Maybe. Oh, I'm I'm fairly certain that Facebook is in the pocket oh, of yeah, the yeah, government. Yeah, yeah. That's oh, what, no doubt. That's what they did yeah. to Instagram. You right. know, Facebook yeah. bought Instagram. Yeah, Facebook owns Instagram. When um yeah. Zuckerberg went to to the was it the Congress? Yeah. Yeah. And they were investigating all that the was privacy embarrassing. stuff. Embarrassing. But listen. Fucking Congress. Like after all that, he might have struck in a deal with the US government saying, Leave me the fuck alone and I'll do this. You know, I think he'd already had something. Maybe. Because yeah. he was already Maybe that was like we're mm-hmm. slapping your hand for this. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. That's Don't what do it I again. thought it was. Like, yeah. hey, you're forcing our hand, Zook. Come on, yeah. man. All right, we gotta haul your ass in. Look, yeah, if you, if we're, we're gonna ask you some embarrassing questions, like, "Hey, I don't understand how the internet works. Oh, right? No. Why don't you charge people for this, uh, dude? Do you understand how this works? No, you don't. Okay, great. Now I'm gonna go home. Right. That was basically what yeah. it was. Too. Or he just went in for like a rewiring. Right. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> Upgrading. <laughs> Getting I have. Thing. Six gigs of RAM. <laughs> My wife knows all about it. Man. I love how we're all doing. This is a podcast. I can't do that shit. And we're all doing the robot. Like we're doing the, right. the guy from you're Grandma's rub- Boy. You're rubbing your six nipples oh over there. Oh my god! I'm, look at me. I'm doing the robot. Mm, hey. I hate your face, Congress. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Sit on my face. Mm, JP. That was his name. Oh, JP. Mm. Hey, JP, did you take the red pill? <laughs> right, right. Oh, One God. of the funniest goddamn movies I've ever seen. Ugh. Maggie Mae's on the floor. I am a genius. <laughs> that movie, or the music he's listening to, it's just... Oh, it's like oh, fucking oh, hard techno, oh, whatever. And he's like nails on a chalkboard. Uh, you, what are you guys talking about, Grandma's Boy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which one's that? 
the JP, the game designer. That's you know the They're all weird like game robot. testers and stuff like that. I don't think I've ever seen. You've never seen Grandma's Happy Madison. Boys? Oh my god, are you oh kidding me? Oh my god, dude. Was that one of the movies that you recommended to me the yeah. other night? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I suggest watching it because I've read. I read. I remember writing it down. That's a good flick. Okay, it's yeah. a it's a funny ass movie. <laughs> you know, the first time I watched like <laughs> Billy Madison, I didn't really like it. And this, I and I like felt this, this one. I think. It's, well, I, I like it now. Yeah. yeah, but it took me a couple times. And it's all the guys from Sandler's Posse. Yeah, he's but always got the same crew. Yeah, but these minus uh, him. What? Sometimes, yeah. The way it's cast, it man, it's he's got a Halloween movie. It just flows. Movie. It just flows so well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a new Halloween movie coming out on, on Netflix. Netflix. Is it the uh, another? Um... It's one of the Happy Madison movies he's got. Oh no doubt. Yeah, yeah. it's coming. It's coming out. It's I not out what it's yet. Called. Cool. It's probably got Drew Barrymore or something in it. Have you guys seen? Right. Uh, the, it's actually another. It's called Hubie Halloween. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. Have you seen um, The Wrong Missy yet on Netflix? Yes, that is fucked dude. up, dude. <laughs> no, I haven't. Dude, <laughs> dude, watch that movie too. So it's it's David it's it's David Spade. Yeah. Okay. And it reminds me. Do you, it reminds me of his character from Tommy Boy. Richard, but he's all like grown up, like now. as an adult, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, struggling in life. That's who. That's who he reminds. But me he's of. like loaded. He has this like really good job. <laughs> he runs into this beautiful like former tennis player, right. athlete. Bang! It has an like, amazing night with. And him. they have like one amazing night. He met this other girl. Her name's Missy. Missy is the first one. He was he was set up on a blind date, and she turned out to be a disaster. Oh, it was terrible. So and she was absolutely like batshit crazy. He's going to a work thing somewhere in Hawaii. He asked the girl who he ran into at the airport to come with him. Um, he thought he asked. But then the wrong Missy <laughs> answered it, and then she shows up. And okay. the rest of the movie right. is... Dude, <laughs> it's the funniest fucking movie I've seen in a long time. Like, my face hurt yeah, the I whole entire hard. time. Okay, okay. I love a dude, good Sarah comedy. Sarah and I man. were just like, oh my god. What there, is, there was a scene in it where she's not like... believe this. She hooked up a threesome with his ex-girlfriend that he's still hung up on. <laughs> yeah. I love David Spade, man. <laughs> Joe was, Dirt. Was, dude, Spade's underrated. so messed up. I used to love Spade on SNL, man, when he would do the uh, the Weekend Update segments. Yeah, yeah. He was great. Yeah, Spade's always He's great. witty. He's very witty. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But so, uh, was a good movie. let's take a break. Yeah. Sure. sure. Yeah, we'll uh, recharge the batteries, come back, and cool down. Sounds good. Sound like a plan? Yes, sir. All right. We'll see you on the other side. Become a subscriber at patreon.com slash the old 77 podcast. Never got any indication that she had any interest in me. So all of these stories are just bogus. Delusional thoughts from Fantasy Island. You'll never get metal legs. Samantha is fucking Alex. No, she's not. <laughs> That, that, I don't remember the details of it, but that's that's the gist that I remember. Yeah, man. God damn, dude. That I'm kill sorry, me. man. Yeah, that would kill me. Right? So uh, let's get let's get to it. Huh? Let's do this. Welcome back to the old seventy seven. It's a safe place in an unsafe world. So, fellas, it's a cool down segment right now, right? Yeah. Cool down <laughs> segment <laughs> to episode twenty. Yes. Twenty in. We're twenty in. We're twenty deep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like fifteen for me, maybe something like that. When did you come in? I think it was episode five. Was right? it five? I think five. it was five. We brought yeah, Dave in was. around five. Dave's yeah. a regular now. Yeah, man. Yeah, having fun. Glad to have you, yeah, buddy. man. The more the merrier, brother. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah. Continue. Uh, continue. Oh, geez, you want me to continue? <laughs> so, so is so. I was gonna say, is this officially the end of season one? Or are we gonna? Do so this? I think we're gonna hold off on that yes. for now. Twenty five. Yeah. I think we're gonna do something maybe twenty five ish. I like yeah. that because then the end of season four would be at one hundred, which would be cool. Well, I was trying to think of in terms of like TV seasons because you know back when they used to be a year. I don't want to do this for a year and call yeah. that a season. Yeah, yeah, you know, you go back That'd and look at old lot. TV shows and they had like. 20, 30 episodes yeah, a season. That's what I'm thinking. And it seems like most TV shows today, it's like seven or eight. 20, 25. Yeah. Looking back, like 20 episodes, we've put some work into it. Holy cow. But if you go back and listen to like the beginning, we're just trying to find our niche. 
you know, kind of working things out. Uh, some like of them Scott early episodes. Scott and I did. I think it was episode three. We did like a 14-minute episode. Just yeah. Just news stories we were cracking on. I remember that. Like, one. we just didn't uh, know where fun. to go with it. It was just fun. And, yeah, and um, we, we uh, you know, at first we were doing topics, and now we still kind of do topics. A little bit, yeah. Like tonight. Tonight was a little bit of a and topic. Through the, uh, and, and through the first seven, eight episodes, you know, we had some technical issues. Oh, man. Microphones and stuff like right. that. So we've uh, we've learned how to, like, get out of those glitches, those yeah. technical issues. Well, and also. And we're sounding a whole lot better now. The budget is still zero. That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> well, but is it? Is it? Mm-hmm. Well, yes, yes, it is. Yeah. Zero for you, though. Well, no, I'm just still came out of the same pocketbook. Well, I know. I, yeah. I recently upgraded and got our uh, got our, Well, I didn't. My wife, my lovely wife, recently thank you, uh, Andrea. bought me a, a focus right. Yeah. So we have a focus right here because our 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 interface right now is on loan, and so now we we don't have to worry. I just got to get the damn thing working though. It it runs a little different. Well, man. Is it like a newer version? Yeah, it's an upgraded okay. version. Gotcha. Well, maybe it has more to it than like That's the last one. That's what I'm hoping, yeah, yeah. Which is better for us. Absolutely. I, I, I can't say no to that, yeah. That's a hell of a gift. And yeah, now man. we can take this shit on the road, too. Yeah, absolutely. And with Dave's gift of the laptop with mm. an interface, we've got also our friend Derek. Shout D- out to d Rook. D-Love gave us the board here. so Don't forget the special sauce. The special sauce. Su- can't, can't <laughs> Don't slip it. in the sauce. It's so special. <laughs> can't forget. Thank you for your service, brother. Right, thank <laughs> God damn it, you Derek. You bastard. <laughs> thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> if you're hearing this now, you, you're getting through an hour and a half Well, he told me he, he was joking around today. He's like, so when am I going to come on the show? And I was like, we're recording tonight. I gotta work. That ain't gonna work. <laughs> Can't make it. Well, we'll be there at eleven. Yeah. It's quarter till eleven now. Yeah. I mean, we're going strong, D Love. Clock's ticking, dude. We're right. yep. Tick tick. I'll text you. <laughs> it was really cool. Like last week, having, oh man, that was great. Having like testing the remote setup, right? And it and worked pretty well. It worked well, it yeah. Did, because I have those like vaulted ceilings, yeah, and that breakfast nook. Mm-hmm. So the sound kind of travels up. Yeah, it really it didn't echoed sound a little. Bad at all. It sounded good. Yeah. I thought it sounded great. I kind of missed you guys being in the basement. <laughs> did you? I Aww. really did. I've kind of gotten it, a routine of you guys coming over. You're my excuse to clean the top part of the house. Aww. I'll be missing you at all. That feels so special. <laughs> missing, missing you. That's when you know you're an no adult. Matter. <laughs> Somebody's coming over so you clean your missing house. You. you know, to whatever degree you clean your house, no too. Matter. Like That's a very adult thing. Like, when you're a what kid and your parents... Say? clean up the house because they have guests you're like what are you doing what are you why are you cleaning the house but when you're an adult you're like shit i gotta clean the house now so our kids will ask what are we doing who's coming over and why they don't anymore uh, matt and dave's coming over right they're tired I'm, of us I'm now. boring. I'm very boring. Right? I'm not like bringing presents over. You guys just want to talk. Yeah, you know. And Jonah Man, he want, he he loves that. That dude loves him some video games. He loves yeah. him some video games. Yep. That was one of the things. Well, I can't remember. Did we already talk about this? About how um, I was telling you about that article about playing video games and how how um, aliens abduct him. No, no, not this time. <laughs> no, uh, 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 there was this lady. I think it was a CNN article, and she yeah, was talking. You said she got the switch. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I couldn't yeah, remember. Did, yeah, yeah. I couldn't remember if that was on the air or not. You know, I've kind of I I don't. Like, I have a, an Xbox, Xbox One or whatever, Xbox One S. I haven't played it much lately, though. Maybe I need to Maybe I need to do that again. I got a Switch, but my boy's been playing it. Yeah. Do you do any video gaming these days, Maddie? Only when I'm playing pocket ball. <laughs> I see. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. And what game do you choose? <laughs> uh, Space Invaders? Do you have a video game console at your house? I do. I have an Xbox uh, Xbox One. Yeah, same yeah. thing I have. So, so that's I have what a couple of years old now, something like that. I yeah. got it in 20, for non gamers. I got it in twenty twenty seventeen. Yeah, about the same for me. I and think so, the last system I owned was a PlayStation Two. Yeah, I have wow, games yeah. for it. Um, I just don't play them. We use it. We use it a lot for like you know, Blu rays and stuff like right. that. Yeah. Um, media growing player. up, I had um, an Atari, and then I moved on to Nintendo. I played Nintendo so much when I was a kid, oh in sixth God. grade, Me too. that I failed two different subjects. <laughs> so my dad took it away from me, 
And he put it in the closet and locked it up. And he's like, you're not allowed to play until your grades come up. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. The guy was so addicted to Nintendo. Right, right. He'll tell you, man. My mom and dad will tell you. Like, <laughs> Did you get those grades up, though? Well, the thing was, like, no. when, when they were sending test home to be signed, I was forging my mom's name. Yeah. <laughs> and so they had this, like, parent-teacher conference. Oh, no. It was, like, oh, mid-year. No. And my grades, two of my grades were, two of my subjects were just in the in shitter. The toilet. And my dad goes up there and we're like, we have all the tests here. Have you not been signing this? And I was like, it looks like Matt's been busy. Oh. <laughs> so, so the nun called me creative. Oh, no, the yes. nun. Dude. She's like, well, he's a very creative young man. Set the tone for the rest so of my your mom, life. So my mom went from signaturing her, like my test from Rose Francis to Rosemarie Francis. So like, so I it'd be harder for you to forge yes, it. Yes. Yeah. Did you though? No, I did. After that, I learned my lesson. I'm like, I can't do this shit. Anymore. Did I tell you guys the story? I was cheating the system. <laughs> yeah. Did I tell you guys about the story when I was in first grade and I forged my mom's signature on like they sent something that she had to sign because I was a bad kid that day, <clears throat> and so I got my mom to sign her signature like on a separate piece of paper and then I cut it out with scissors <laughs> and taped it out. <laughs> And I got caught. That was clearly. Yeah. yeah, I got caught and I had to go to the principal's office. And the thing that reminded me was because the, my teacher said yeah. the same thing. Well, David's creative. <laughs> yeah. Dude, so growing up in this, we used to walk to school, like, in, you know, grade school and all in that. In eight inches. Yeah. Of snow. So my friend Joey Caputa <laughs> lived right next door to us. Like, we lived in row homes. We just had a huge family. Like, their family was my family. It was just a great environment to grow up in. Just unbelievable people. I love them all. And so. You know, Joey and I walked to school together, and then my friend Bernie was on the way, and we would stop, and the three of us would get into so much shit, you know, mischief shit. That sounds like a Fat Albert car. So we would, uh, there was one time we went, there was this, um... Matt, Joey, and Bernie over here. (laughs) Joey. There was a store on the way to school, and it was owned by some Asian people. Do you remember, uh, Coors Cutters? So we stole a Coors Cutter... (laughs) No, that, I that was a drink. That We're course. talking some like late eighties fucking. Yeah, it was before late my drinking shit. days. But yeah, I don't. I don't remember that. We steal a Coors Cutter out of the fucking store, and <laughs> the old Asian guy sees one of us. Oh shit! So we're like standing like in this store frame, whatever, like down the street, and uh, he comes out and he like comes into like where we're at, and he goes, "Where'd you get that?" <laughs> we're like, uh. Uh, <laughs> did you steal that from me? <laughs> We're like, no. He's like, you lie! <laughs> you lie! <laughs> and he grabs my friend Bernie, and he takes him up to the store with him. And Joey and I are like, what the fuck are we going to do now? <laughs> the fucking crossing guard witnesses this shit? We're like, oh, yeah. oh, what the fuck? She's like, what are you guys doing with a beer? We're like, we stole it! <laughs> so we go up to the store, and somehow, like... Like, he was going to call the cops on Bernie. He was threatening to call the cops on Bernie. <laughs> so we go up. Like, we're halfway up to the store, and Bernie, like, just fucking bursts out of the store. And he, like, <laughs> is like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> we start running down the street with him. Oh, dude, we used to take apples. But this is during high school. We did some bad shit. So we would, like, pick apples off this tree. And then we'd sit on this corner, and the SEPTA bus would be driving down the street. And we're just fucking chucking apples at this bus. <laughs> And so this bus like just stops, and this driver comes down. He's like, "What the fuck are you guys doing, man?" And we just hold ass. And my buddy Steve like dropped his keys, and he's like, "Oh my fucking keys!" <laughs> We're like, "You can't go back now. This guy's after us." <laughs> there was one night where this it was like beautiful night out. This this pizza place had their doors <laughs> wide open, and we're across the street. We have like a carton of eggs, dude. My <laughs> friend Mike. It was like fucking Joe Montana, dude. He like <laughs> threw this egg and it went directly into the store because the door is wide open. <laughs> this fucking guy comes out like a bat out of hell. Gets in his, uh, god damn it, it wasn't a Jeep. It was one of those, um, li- they look like little mini Jeeps. The trackers? I, yeah. Like he a Geo Tracker? He gets in his Geo Tracker oh. and starts chasing our asses <laughs> around the neighborhood. <laughs> That's, uh, a, that's dude, a car that'll put the right. fear of God into My you. My friends and I got into so much. I wanted one of them so bad. Oh, we got into so much trouble, man. <laughs> I mean, we got we got away most of the time, but right. I mean, we did so much most shit. That, dude, I'm I'm lucky to be alive. Oh, all the stupid shit right. I did. Yeah. Me too, man. I'm so lucky. I can think of at least I don't know four or five and, occasions that I should. And these been are the days dead. before cell phones. Right. Like, yeah, I know, you I'm know so what? glad I grew up in those days. We're just we'll meet here. Everyone meets there, and then you just you know. 
take you from there. Yeah. yeah, man, I do miss those days. I hate to sound oh. like an old fucker. But man, I'm really dating myself here. I mean, I, I really I worry. Too, I really worry damn. about like you know my kids. What you know, <laughs> such a different. Easy world. there, Grandpa. No, I remember the day I used to up. wear. I used to wear uh, newspapers on my feet, and I'd <laughs> be pouring right outside. Paradise. <laughs> Sounds like Sean Connery. Sorry. Shake and not stir, Alex. Stop. <laughs> Stop hitting the mic there, Dave. Sorry. Sorry. That was the That's worst. not what your mother said it's last not... night. Connery. Uh, Andre, do you do any impressions? I mean, the... I, I heard you doing accents earlier. But do you have any impressions? We, we accent. No, yeah. I don't think I have any impressions, do I? Uh, not that I know of. God, I know Scott me. does. I got a million, but I can't think of any of them right yeah, now. Yeah, but all mine you can't do, really. Like Mike Tyson is the best. <laughs> Only you like... Only you like my Mike Tyson. I think he sounds like Cleveland. <laughs> yeah, but that's just me being me, Cleveland? and I'm like, damn it. Uh, so I, I, can, I can do Cleveland. Cleveland's no, doing it now. Party right, over here. <clears throat> <laughs> See, now it's just throwing me on the spot. I don't know if I can. I know. I'm trying to think of, of, uh, cool of impressions whip. I can do, and I'm Thank freezing you. up. Cool whip. Cool whip. So I don't know exactly if there we're talking is. like Cleveland over here. There it is. <laughs> but anyway, Sometimes. so the other day I was at work, <laughs> and I said to Martha, Martha, I just don't understand. You know, that's pretty good Cleveland. <laughs> that's a pretty good Cleveland. But sometimes I just do it, and I don't realize I'm doing it. But here's yeah. the fun part. And then she says I the... sound like Jerry Seinfeld. Oh my god! So yes. I don't understand what's going on over what's here. What's the deal with the airport? So why are you over here? <laughs> what is the deal with these people? I can't do it. I, I actually liken your your podcast to Jerry Seinfeld because it's a show, a show about, about nothing. nothing. It really yeah. is. Yeah. Absolutely. H- hence this segment. <laughs> Sarah always asks. Every asked, segment. Right. Sarah always asks me, like, what was the subject uh, in this show? I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> we started with this, but then we got a little bit off track. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, it deteriorated from there. Well, it's funny when well. we, we were talking about this the other day and we came together, me and Matt, with the core concept of this show. Like, none of that was in play. Like, we had no idea. It's all just organically played out. Which I like. I love that. That's the best part of this show. And I hope that if you're still listening, I hope you're enjoying it as well. Let us know. Yeah. I mean, you can always become a part of the show by picking up the phone, calling, or texting us at... 573-246-0779. Perfect. And check us out on Patreon, too. Yeah, absolutely. Our Patreon page. You'll see, you know, if you want to... You know, Patreon is paid not... for some extra stuff. Right. That's fine. You know, and, and also, if you like the show, let us know. And if you want to come on or if you have an idea or, you know, if you want us to come out and broadcast at your place. Yeah, if you have then... an interesting story to yeah, tell. Yeah, we, we can do that now. We can do yeah. that now. Yeah, we can take We would like to talk road. to uh, Jamie, if you're listening. Yes, Up Jamie. at the record store yes. in the Groove here in, in the Jeff Groove, City. baby. Great store. I'd love to do a music episode just up in the Groove, you know? For I'm sure. gonna I'm gonna reach out to him. Yeah, you know, pff, dude, we could run an output from a from a turntable into our board. That's right. We can listen to music. Right. While we could we could have a start. You know, talk about albums. In. Yeah. We can go in there. We can each pick out an album. Yeah, that'd be awesome, dude. Man, there's something to be said. That's you know, a good idea. just the experience of going into a record store, whether it's vinyl or you know CDs or tapes or whatever, just and going f- in and just right. yeah, just touching the music and, and that's a that's a lost art. Yeah, a record look, store. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I used to always enjoy go. You know, like all all the artwork. You know, most mm-hmm. albums you'd buy them, all the lyrics would be right. inside. Like that was that was such a great part of the like, experience. There's a, there's a very like intimate connection with you and what you like but you know what that's your taste of music that's something that is solely unique Mm -hmm. to jeff city you know you can't find another in the groove anywhere jamie says he gets people from uh, from everywhere man right like they just pass through and they're like i have to stop here yeah it's a very nostalgic thing people love that people love vinyl and that's what he has going for himself yeah i actually worked with a girl when we first came here at the bank and her mom actually got a stereo system from him because it had the turntable. Oh, yeah, yeah. He sells the old school yeah. stuff, too, the high end. Yeah. I need to go in there. It's been a while since I've been in there. Well, I just I, I follow him on Facebook, and mm-hmm. I just saw where he somebody had sold him some really high end, clean, mm-hmm. like, pro audio. I saw that, too. Like, yeah. hey, yeah, not only, not only that, but he's just a really good dude. Yeah, he's a, he's a great guy. 
Yeah, every he's time. He's just a great, just a genuine person. I've moved a friend that we have in common with him, and yep. I've worked with that guy side by side. You, you know what? You can, you can tell a lot by working next to a dude. Absolutely. You know? oh, yeah. And this guy is. He's, he's a good dude. He's a genuine cat. Absolutely. Dude I busted agree. his butt that day. One of our favorite guys. Right? Yeah. Heart of gold. Yeah, man. And so, like, so we were talking about podcasts earlier. Is anybody listening to any kind of podcast right now? Because we're talking about maybe doing some, reaching out to some other podcasts and doing some cross-pollination here in the future. Is anybody listening to anything right now? I am, but not anybody that's going to let us come on their show or uh, vice versa. What about come on ours? I mean, let's see. Or, or just the fact that if you're listening to somebody, plug them right now. That's the first step. Uh, yeah. Um, I plugged whoever I was yeah. talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I plugged the Grimerica guys earlier because right. I've been listening to those guys for a long time. All the other podcasts I'm listening to currently are like, you know, big podcasts. Like right. Joe Rogan. I do Joe Rogan and I do. Well, that's okay. I mean, plug him too. If that's what you're listening to, listen come on to. the like, show, Joe. Like Joe Rogan. <laughs> come on, Joe. Um, if you're a sports guy, I think you would like the Bill Pollock show. Did oh, you guys? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, Bill's, Bill's, oh Bill's why didn't I dude. think of that? Um, that dude. Absolutely. You can uh, you can find Bill um, on Twitter anywhere. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's also at uh, he's is he at Missouri Net too? He's at Missouri Net. Yep. Um, yeah, and he was like on your first or second episode. Yeah, he was on our very first, the yeah. Radio Roundtable. Right, right. We need to get him back on. Um, I did start listening to a new podcast the other day. It's called Dissect. Have you guys ever heard of that podcast? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the whole the whole podcast is they take you know classic albums and dissect them. Cool. And they do it one like they they dedicate an episode to each song on the album. It's really cool. It's really cool. You guys should check it out, my my fellow music lovers. I was listening to the Kanye West one last night. Of course you were. Yeah. <laughs> hey, have you guys? Had, <clears throat> you know the sad thing here is I was just gonna say, is there a Kanye? Yeah, one? there oh, is. Oh man. Yeah. Okay, so like. You guys ever listen to to? Dave. Have you guys ever listened to the My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy album before? Of Kanye's? Yes. No. Yeah. No. That album, man, like it's widely regarded as like the best album of the 21st century so far. I just can't bring myself to to enjoy Kanye. I get it, dude. I just I get can't. It. I get it, man. He's a lunatic. He is. He's a little <laughs> wacky. He's beyond. I mean, he's a he's mentally. Uh, he's clearly has. I mean, he's admittedly has mental health yeah. issues. I I feel like they've gotten a lot worse. They've gotten as worse as the years have, older, have gone yeah. on. As he's got as he's lost his mom, <clears throat> you can almost see the downfall. Yeah, like that when was his, a big when his mom died, yeah. and then the what? I was gonna say he married a Kardashian. I'd be mental too. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I guess you would have to be mental to marry one of those. But isn't of, that like a prequisite? Like a prerequisite? <laughs> like. You, you sign that on the on the dotted line. Are you crazy? Okay, yes. Yeah. Then answer question B. Yeah. Well, listen, man. I got into Kanye like really early on, like when his first album came out. You and came... Isaac. Yeah, yes. the homie Isaac. Yeah, you man. You and your Kanye brothers. That college dropout album, man. That was such a great album. Like, and I, I... the two whitest Kanye brothers around. <laughs> I know it was funny. It was whitest like, white dudes. What? So I wore From the re City. the way that I found out that Isaac was a was a Kanye fan was I wore a t shirt into into work one day that that had the the teddy bear and it said the college dropout and Isaac right. and Isaac saw that t shirt and he complimented me on it and then we started talking about Kanye and we we discovered we had a shared interest and from that day on you we and were, Isaac were like we were inseparable like intertwined <laughs> that's right that's I guess right. we're joined at the pelvis yeah yeah no yeah. man I I get it okay so people always ask me about the Kanye running for president thing because people know that I like Kanye right right dude no uh, no. I would, never, I would never. I would never. I would never vote for Kanye. You know, I've actually heard that there's a little more to it than that. Yeah, there's people from the Trump right, camp that, that are trying to get him on ballot. Well, yeah, and that like he. I'm afraid they're going to end up screwing Kanye. Maybe get him. You know, he. I definitely feel like he's being used. Yeah, yeah. Get him on some charges. But he's for so like he. Does, that dude doesn't give a fuck. He'll do That's it just, just because. That's, he don't care. Just to do, like right, it's, it's a, making him relevant again. It's, exactly, it's the same. I don't it's think the same he, mentality. Yeah, it's kind of irrelevant. Any publicity is good publicity. Mm, he's at not this point. though, dude. He's not irrelevant. Well, it's because he's with the Kardashians, man. So I, I beg to differ. I think he's become a joke now. 
I, I, I don't think the Kanye name. Dave, I'm not is, trying to start a fight. Right? Here. No. <laughs> Throw these fucking Dave is off. getting super mad over here. No, Put you your shirt back me. on. Jesus. I don't you know you care about Kanye's. I mean, he's care one of those people. He's one of those people. Like, I don't think he will ever be irrelevant. But I think that his music certainly is not as good as it used to be. I'll definitely say that. Kanye so. is not relevant. I mean, I will Stop fuck it. you guys up. Stop. Say I one mean, more thing about Kanye. We're Say talking one about more him. Thing about we're talking Kanye. about him, right? Like we talk. They were talking about him on CNN and Fox right. News. Like right. he's clearly is relevant, but not in the way that but I would like for him. If to he go. was right. smart, he would have had a new album lined up. Exactly. All this shit. He's supposed to have a new album, dude. Every like, time, every time he's supposed to release an album, does he get crazy? He gets to the yeah that, and it gets to the release date, and it's not out, and yeah. then it's like a week later, it, like <clears throat> his one album, he like. He released it, and then he like changed songs oh, I remember that. over time. So then he re-released it. It was like yeah. a very lazy way to do an album. I mean, the guy's talented. There's no doubt about it. He's he is, dude. Musically speaking, just speaking as a guy that does music and kind of sort of understands, you know, hip hop production and stuff like that. He's brilliant in that area. Mm. But he's definitely kooky in a mm. lot of other like I don't right. I don't challenge. I think that. it's more of an ego thing. See, and it's like oh, he Bono. has a huge ego. It's sure. like Bono with U two for me. Like because of him, oh. I, I don't care to listen to U two. I'm mm. the same way. You know? But you, I don't just get think, me wrong, I think the Edge is a great guitarist. You I, know? Yeah, I'm just not But a I wouldn't go out and buy a U two But I'm not going yeah. out. Right, I ain't <laughs> Me neither, but I, but that's not because I don't like Bono. That's just because right. I don't like. I, I just too. I just don't like Bono. Yeah. I don't I, I don't know. All right, so, about so, so that. I thought the Joshua Tree was a really good album. Yeah, yeah. fuck that album, man. Really, you don't like that album? Ooh, I'm just damn. kidding. No, damn, I'm just kidding. Back, he's getting back at me for <laughs> the old Kanye comment. <laughs> that's all right. Fuck your album, man. <laughs> yeah, you like that? Did you huh? fuck with Kanye? No, fuck Joshua Tree, dog. <laughs> Kanye put that in his ass. Yeah, I've Kanye never, would, he put I'm, shame to that shit. I've never listened to that shame. album from start to finish. I'm sure that my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy is better than that album. Oh damn! But I mean, different you know. time frame though. Too. So Scott, yeah. like, what you're talking about the '80s, man? Yeah. yeah. What kind of hip hop do you like, Scott? I don't like a whole lot of hip hop, yeah. to be honest. It, so is there anybody? Like, that I like some in? of the old, like the old school hip hop, like from the you know, like early, NWA, like Wu Tang, yeah, shit like, like that. You like Wu Tang? I don't care for. Eh, it's all right. Were you a Dr. Dre fan? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, huge Wu- Dre fan. The Chronic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Rolled into Snoop a little bit. There yeah. You go. Yeah, even retroactive back to NWA. You know, rap kind of lost me for a while after that period right. too. Yeah. It yeah. had me just a little bit before and, it. And still to this day, like 90% of the modern rap that I hear, I fucking hate. Right. But See, every for once me, in a while, I hear For some me, good it shit. was when Nas became popular. Because that whole where you would just rap like this and it was the same. Oh, yeah, the whole it was like the same steel tone. mouth thing. Yeah. Right. And, you, and th- when that style became, that's when hip hop lost its soul for yeah, me. Yeah, but dude, his first album, Illmatic, dude, that's like widely regarded as one of the greatest well, hip hop I mean, albums that's, ever. That's great for them, but I don't care for it. You know? bye, 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 that bye, album, bye. that album was great, but man, Imagine that. a lot of his right. other albums were very lacking production wise. Yeah. I thought, but he's a great lyricist. Yeah. I like just uh, the, the monotone <laughs> when they hit that mono. They lost. Well, it. now, dude, now because it's monotone and it's auto tuned. Yeah. And it's all humming, a humming, a humming. Oh yeah, humming. Right. I cannot I do that. I can't shit, do it, man. I can't do it. I liked um, Beastie Boys back in the day. Me too. For I sure. was really, really man, introduced me to out. it because then I like ran into like Rum DMC mm-hmm. and even like LL Cool J was like pretty good. Yeah, I remember listening. Where you get? Where you guys? Fresh Prince of Bel- Fresh Prince. You mean DJ, DJ Jazzy Jeff? Jazz, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about DJ Jazzy Jeff? Fresh Prince of Bel- like, Fuck the Fresh Tupac? Prince. Fucking Will Smith. Yeah, do but I, I'm not as obsessed with Tupac as some um, people are. I, but, I, I mean, I, I like Tupac stuff. I just I was never a big fan, but like he is definitely like a generational talent. Okay. Yeah, uh, I liked Biggie. I Another liked, generational um, talent. Um, who else am I? Looking? I said Wu Tang already. Mm-hmm. Wu Tang. Um, Busta Rhymes. Busta Rhymes was Dude, really Outcast. good. I love Outcast. Yeah, we talk about Outcast earlier. Yeah. Outcast, Outcast was, really was good. kind of the group that got me back into hip hop. Uh-huh. Yeah. After I got out of it for a while. After After the 2000 hit, and it was like, what now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, like I remember Bombs. O- that we talked about Bombs that song earlier. Bad, that yeah. song got me into Outcast. That yeah. album, that Stankoni album. Busta yeah, Rhymes is definitely yeah. like that's an, a good a album. Very. Yeah. Busta Rhymes is definitely underrated as a rapper. Oh, like, dude, he's a beast. Dude, he can rap so freaking fast, dude. And it all makes sense. Did you listen to much Eminem, Scott? No. I, I like I like them, not, too. Not I, an I, fan? I never cared for Eminem. I yeah. was a fan of his second album the most. Couple of my but best I think friends. that's our age. Yeah. Think about it, Dave. Yeah. 
I, he was really big when we were in high school. And yes. Scott had already sold that ship. Yeah, man. I was I was listening to Nerf Herder and a bunch of other things like that. Mm-hmm. Weird shit at that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was listening to everything, but, you know, I, I, I just can't get into, like, some of the new hip-hop today. Yeah, I can't either. Me some neither. of it's just, like, it's just so robotic and just, like, I don't know, like, but you know so what? It's not, it, it doesn't even stop there, even in the rock and roll, and even in the country music, because right. I heard a country song the other day that had it, that had the auto-tune. Yeah, the auto-tune just drives it, me nuts, Right, man. it had the mono, like, there was maybe, you know, it, and they all sound the same, too. They do. Yep. You know? And when you think about it, like that, what Mark Ronson guy? Yeah, he's writing like ninety oh, yeah. percent of the tunes oh, yeah. on top forty hit. Yeah, you know? yeah. So when one guy writes all the songs, I like what Dave Grohl said about music. It's not supposed to be perfect, right? Right. And that's what it is now. There's a there's a, a, a so there's one band cause you can call them a band that I like the modern band. I'm a, I like Twenty One Pilots, man. They've got some good shit. There's a lyric in one of their songs. <clears throat> uh, it's called Lane Boy, and the lyric is. Uh, don't trust a perfect person and don't trust a song that's flawless. Like, cause that's, that was basically the point that they were making. There Music is not supposed to be perfect. Like, like, uh, we talked, no, I, we, we've talked a little bit about, about the Grateful Dead. The Grateful Dead were like, they were not great singers. Like right. they were, they did not sing in they were a well, jam band. but there was, there was also, uh, that was part of what made people like them too. Um, you know, fuck Bob Dylan. That dude can't sing. But that's part of his charm, right. right? There's a lot of examples of that. It's a drinking game we used to play called Bob and It. You try to rhyme something that just clearly wouldn't rhyme uh-huh. with something else. Everybody, run right again! Hey, we're gonna go out here. <laughs> he made some great albums, 70s. man. He did. I'm not. I'm just saying that's. I'm, oh no, I get it, man. No, no, he's a killer sound. writer. Don't get I, me wrong. I saw him. I think I told you guys. His son's this. pretty talented too. Jacob. Jacob, Jacob. Yeah, man. That first Wallflowers album. I still listen to that. That's album. A good, That's, that's a, good a good album. album yeah. Man. Very Three underrated. Three Marlenas and yeah. One Headline. One Headline. All those songs. Sixth Avenue yeah. Heartache. Yeah. yeah. Great song, dude. Definitely underrated '90s album. That, oh, that dude. That was an era right there. That whole Wallflowers era. There were some good tunes that came out that time. Uh, oh, yeah. Another g- group from that era that I like was Better Than Ezra. Did you guys yeah, listen oh, to Better, better, than, better than, than Ezra? I liked Better Than yeah. Ezra. Yeah. Rosalia. Rosalia. Good. Yeah, yeah. That was a good album. Their second album. That was a good. That was alternative music at the time. Yeah, that was alternative. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, Alice that, in Chains. That was classic Alice in Chains. Yeah, listening to Wood. Mm-hmm. AIC is one of my favorites, man. They. Who? AIC. Oh, I, yeah, absolutely, man. Their unplugged album. I love that unplugged that, album. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's a... But, you I, know, it's, if you go back wonderful. and you listen to that that band before Jerry Cantrell mm-hmm. showed up, mm-hmm. it was a completely different band. Right. Mm-hmm. It's so amazing mm-hmm. the way that guy transformed things. Yeah, dude. The, they're, they were Their strength was their vocal harmony. Right. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. my God. Lane Stanley. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lane Staley. Like, if Staley. You, if you Sorry. look at the history of music, I mean, another band that was, like, just legendary with their their group harmonics was the Be- uh, the beach boys right america aic uh, they're right up right up where the harmonic sound mm-hmm. like everyone's on the same page it adds so it much so good. it adds so much man when when and it dates it too <clears throat> mm-hmm. you know you know another band that got that was really heavily influenced by like the beach boys that you wouldn't think of was the red hot chili peppers man like if you listen to <clears throat> like the By the Way album, or a lot of the stuff on Stadium Arcadium, they're doing a lot of the same vocal harmonies that guys like the Beatles and the Beach Boys were doing. Like that's a weird <clears throat> band. I know, man, but I I love them though. They have so many different styles. I mean, Anthony Kiedis can't sing for shit, but I love him, and he knows it though. Yeah, right? I mean, he's rapping half of. Right. Half but of you know what? You know? Like he plays it off though. Well. Right? Yeah, he does it well, and he. Uh, inside knowledge here, he uses he's he uses a lot of pitch correction on his oh, does yeah. voice too. Yeah. But he doesn't do it in a way that's annoying. Right, he right. does it. I've in seen a way them in concert, and they're, they're I have too. Pretty good. You and I saw him the same exact night. Mm-hmm. No shit. Mm-hmm. It was that's a good show at Point Fest. Yep. Damn, that's cool. It was a good uh, show. Hole. It was Hole before them, mm-hmm. right? I saw them. They would... Silver Chair. I think Silver Chair was there. Yeah. It was Hole. Uh, I think Cake was there. Because uh, I remember Lit was Lit. there. Lit played the the front stage. Yeah, yeah. my own worst enemy. Yeah. Those guys. Yeah, absolutely. Because oh yeah, that was the same point fest that my friend's band played for the first time. They brought in a trailer. Mm-hmm. An inimical and, drive. Yeah, an inimical drive played. They they headlined the trailer. 
Cool. So they had three stages that year, if I remember right. Yeah, I think that sounds yeah. right. You remember that weird dude Jesse that was on MTV? He was, yes. Oh, shit, sorry. He was there that day. Yes. Do you remember that? Yeah. Oh, was that that tall, skinny looking hey, alien guy. looking guy? Yeah, he oh, was God. there that day. Jesse. I remember like whatever happened to that guy? I think uh, didn't he like disappear for a while? He's probably dead. Probably went back to his own planet. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that guy was. I gotta go back. I gotta go home. Beat me up. What was the deal with that guy? I don't know. God. People were obsessed Burnout? with that guy. Right. Weird. But yeah, I don't. I don't get that one. What? What was like? What show was he on? Like, how did he? I, don't even I think remember. he came up through like one of the real worlds or something, didn't he? Or oh man, Road show. Rules, or they had a whole bunch of them back then. I think you're right. He was on one of those shows, and his popularity from one of those shows. Yeah, it it carried over. Like, well, let's let's get this guy to and be they, a. A, a, a television. They tried to make him a VJ, yeah. yeah, and he failed miserably. This guy's weird. He as was fuck. right. He was just too off. Strange the wall. cat, man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What was his name again? Jesse, but I don't remember. Yeah, him. it was like it wasn't like it was him. It was it was basically he was so awkward and weird that it, there was no one like him. So his uniqueness, <laughs> right, was the reason why he was on television. That cat. Yeah, I think yeah. so. My wife always does that. Like, she'll be looking at some shit on her phone, and she'll be like all the way across the room, and she'll stick her phone I do out that. I do and that all think the time. that I can see what the fuck she's pointing at me. I'm like, so what? You didn't see that? Damn it, David. I mean, I saw enough of that. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> that you it's see the this? same guy? Because this is him today. Can I see? Yeah, that looks like him. It's oh, hard. That to tell. is that weirdo. Yeah. It's right? hard to tell because, like, the day that the day at Point Fest, and pretty much all the time I ever saw him on TV, he never yeah. had a hat on. He always had like really weird. No, he had a hat on, if I remember that right. Day? He always wore a hat. Yes, yeah, that he... that was his thing. He had no. the great big like room hat. I thought he kind of had like the emo hair. Before and then, emo hair was well, big. and then when he kicked it off, it was like I just woke up out of the floor hair. Yeah, like that day, it was like woke up at because he probably just fucking woke up out of the floor. Yeah, I don't know. When Why I first are we dedicating saw that so guy, much time to this guy? When I first saw that guy, I was like, <laughs> "Who the fuck is this?" But didn't he? He disappeared like not too long ago, <laughs> Look if at I this remember right. They, fucking guy. They, what do you mean? Like couldn't find? They him? They couldn't find him. Like there was a whole yeah. thing. Oh. Like damn, Sorry. Jesse. What happened to Jesse? Type I didn't thing. know that. Wellness Jesse, if checks. You're, if you're listening right now, you're okay. So fuck yeah, yeah, yeah. good for yeah. you, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next topic. <laughs> Way to make it back to the mothership. <laughs> yeah. If there's he any, he just went home. If there's I any aliens, genius. that's that's back, one. Back to the aliens. There we go. I know. I, <laughs> I am a genius. It always comes back to the aliens. I remember Dave said that one day we were talking and he's like, yeah, so anyway, these guys, uh, they, they were out on this country road and they got abducted by aliens because it always comes back to aliens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it does. It does. They'll get you one of these nights, buddy. God, I hope not. No, I don't. I hope not either. As much as I love talking about it, man, I never, you know, they never come and pick me up and say if hi. So, yeah. I hope it's pleasurable. Yeah, well, I hope so, you too. Know? At least lube up the, right. the oil right. that you're sending in my ass. Right. I, I mean, if there's anal probing, give me some lube. Have some courtesy. Have some cur- Maybe a handshake afterwards. Right. Maybe feed me some dinner afterwards. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks. Try, try not to spit on me during the You got a nice bottle of Right. <laughs> but see, they don't Maybe have... Maybe drop me off at Longhorn afterwards. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Give me your business card. <laughs> right. <laughs> a free Longhorn? Maybe I would have done that probing for a free Longhorn. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right. If they would just throw in a gift if, card. If you just, <laughs> just throw me a gift card. Probe all you want, man. It'd be okay? messed up if like, they dropped... I love Longhorns. It'd be, dr- be messed up if they like, dropped you off and they forgot to put your pants back on. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're just there with like a whole schlong hanging out. <laughs> you guys remember I told so you... So you want the old 96er again? Oh, yes, please. Please. Do you have a napkin, by the way? <laughs> we got to cover this thing up. You guys remember I told you the story about the dude that they switched his shirt when he yeah, got abducted yeah, yeah. and he had he actually had a shirt on that said, oh, I got abducted by aliens and yeah. all I got was a lousy t shirt. <laughs> that was the shirt that he was wearing when he got abducted and he ended up with some like old lady's blouse on <laughs> when they dropped him off, which means that some poor old lady had a sh- had just been abducted by an aliens and, and has a, had a shirt on that said, I just, just got abducted by aliens. Anyway. I'll, I'll stop talking about I wonder about if she came now. back with a do-rag, too. That'd be cool. Right, yeah. Just get a little bit from everybody. <laughs> <laughs> some assless chaps and Maybe do-rag. Maybe some, some platform shoes. Right, right. With you know. goldfish in them. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Like pimp shoes. <laughs> Where'd you go, back in time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, went back to 1960s Harlem. Oh, Bitch my had my money. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what do you think, boys? Think we should end it here? Yeah. 
All right. It's a good place to end it. Yeah, it's a good place to end it. Yeah. All right. So if you would like to become a part of the show, pick up the phone, give us a call, or text at 573-246-0779. Or check out our Patreon page at patreon.com. Uh, the old 77 podcast. Yes, slash the old slash, 77 I'm podcast. Sorry. Yeah. Two sevens. Yeah. Two sevens. Don't spell, yeah, don't that spell it out, go. seven seven. That's a, yeah. That'll get you a completely yeah. different person. God, does it? I don't know. Oh, um, <laughs> did you check that out? Does no, it? No, 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 no. So, we yeah, should right. try it, though. No, let's not. Say we did. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, and again, if you're still here, so uh, our Patreon page has more than just... You, like subscriber only content so we, we started a small blog on it we're also re, you know throwing out graphics and things on it so there's stuff there for you and we're going to keep posting more and more shit yeah so feel free to check it check check in often more and more often S- subscribe rate and review please yeah we'll see you guys next week see you around the t- bye bye <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bore at the time to go home That was the old 77. Subscribers get bonus content and early access to episodes. Find out more at patreon.com slash the old 77 podcast. It's a safe place in an unsafe world.